Block 2. I was just wandering around when I found it lying in a swamp. B.S. It is the Duke's crown. E. How do you know it, Elena? I slowly approached her. Bang she hit the top of my head. Don't you dare try evading the question. E. Come on, I have such pretty things. I showed her the jar in hope that she will be distracted. She paled, but the distraction worked. Fuji, my sweet little Fuji, do you even know what you are holding? E. Pretty glowing lights? How am I supposed to know what is there? God, why did I deserve such a punishment? Alina was holding her head in desperation. Meanwhile, I was playing with the lights. Not only they are adorable, but also very smart. I taught them how to follow my finger in a line, and in a column. Yes, they are flying in circles. Bang you you are. Why did you hit me again? Fuji, you better open that jar. Elena was as serious as she can get. Even after I kissed her that time she was not that angry. Not that it would make me obey her words. My precious lights. I ran away from her as fast as I could. I shall not surrender my pretty lights. They are too fun. And also I already started training them. They are already my pets. This is a violation of my property rights. I will sue her, while I was throwing a tantrum. Alina and Albert started to pinch me. I will not surrender my lights. With this war cry I tried to breach the blockade. Got you. Alina was faster. No. My lights. I gripped the jar with as much strength as I could aptly before the jar cracks. I never let them take the jar. Even when they both tried to pull it out of my hands. It was a fight of a carrier versus two people. The outcome was predictable. In the end they both had to yield. I saved my pretty jar. Fuji, I get it that you like the lights in the jar but do you know what they are? E, yes, they are my pets. Double face palm could you please stop being so childish? Albert had only a second to dodge the fox fires. Yet he somehow made it. Why won't you let them go? Alina was at the point of resignment. Don't want to. Fuji. Do you see them? You see how much they want to fly out of that jar? How about you pretend to be a good fox girl, and open that jar tilde? Alina changed her tactics, she was no longer a mother who chastises her child, but was now a mother who tries to invoke pity towards the lights. I was about to tell her to go far far away, while my actions were just a continuation of my tantrum. At the back of my mind I thought about the fact that the lights were not just a pretty decoration. They showed the signs of sapience, and thus had a right to be considered intelligent. Lights. If you want to leave me, fly up to the cap. If not, to the bottom. All four lights just dived straight to the bottom of the jar. The lights really understood what I said, and then did what I said to them. While I was still dumbfounded by their actions, I looked up towards the other two. They had the same expression as mine. Alina, tell me, what the hell just happened? I, have, no, idea. E, why did they listen to you? E, BB because they are my pets? I tried to make an excuse but it sounded more like a question, as if the lights felt my confusion, they hurried to the fingers I held the jar with, like little flying ethereal cats. They tried to cuddle to me. Fuji. Do you still want to trap them there? Alina gently said that. Trying to motivate me. Look. They don't want to leave me either. Fuji. They are fairies. E. And? Wait a second. Fairies? Albert said that and pointed at my jar. Alina ignored him completely. They are sapient. And I doubt that they like being imprisoned in that jar. E. So. Your grace. Elena of Kaliga, some insight that you can tell me? Elena paled and stared at me with wide eyes. Fuji, this is not a funny joke. Here come the excuses. You don't need to worry, milady. This is a STA safety tilde. She was looking into the ground, trying to avoid my gaze. How? My dear, it is so simple. I was observing you for a long time. Your behavior gave you out quite a few times. Don't you get it? What is more important, are they really imprisoned there? Yes. Some people will pay a lot of money to buy a fairy. 
There is a belief that if you tear off a fairy's wing, your wish will come true. E. Barbarians. The lights have nothing to do with the wishes. I was looking at the jar and thinking, I like those lights and want them with me. But will they be happy with being trapped there? Should I just let them go? From a humanitarian point of view, it is despicable to hold them inside the jar, especially since there are living creatures, I am ought to let them go, but I was concerned that they would leave me the moment I opened the jar. Also, my possessiveness kicked in. After all, they were already akin to my pets at this point, just like Helena and Albert are, and what kind of an owner would I be if I throw them out? When I asked the lights if they wanted to be with me, they showed that they did want to. Would those fairies even like being let out, if they didn't want to? I hesitated for a short while, before finally deciding to open the lid. The lights flew out of the jar and transformed into four little girls. By that little I mean that they were less than 30 centimeters in height. They didn't appear to be running away. When I made a few steps back, they followed me, and the blue one even landed on top of my palm. Master, we thank you very much for saving us from that man. The red fairy said that to me and bowed, all other fairies followed her example. Me? Even though I was also going to keep you there? You wanted to keep us because you liked us, not because we are fairies. The green fairy said that to me. So, what are you going to do? I prepared myself to take a hit. Allow us to serve you, master. All fairies were eager to stay with me. I wondered what they can do but they suddenly glowed and became quite bigger than they were. They became as high as a 14 years old teenagers. I started thinking hard about what I have to do with the new arrivals. Okay. What should I do with them? Aside from having an actual harem, V1 rewrite CH23. Camp duties yesterday I woke up as a kitsune with two Ritu adventurers, and today I woke up as an owner of six slurvents. My awakening would be a bliss to some. Elena tightly hugged me, my head was lying on the blue fairy's lap. The green fairy was combing my hair, the white fairy was fluffing my tails, and the red fairy was my mattress. No, not mistress, mattress. I don't know if it's a paradise or hell, but I know that it became possible only in the fantasy world. I also know that the current level of affection those 14 years. Oh, fairies show to me is weirdly resembling the Davelina and clearly threatens me with the future prospect of being hugging pillow 24-7. One day I should name the fairies to stop calling them by their hair color. Though I was immediately distracted from this good idea by a murderous glare coming from Albert. I know how you feel, buddy. I was a man as well, to show him how much I sympathize I told him with my eyes. You are a goddamned loser. You don't even have a girlfriend. Look at how nice life is when you are a pretty girl. Lo oh say ah tilde he was so touched by my care that he started crying. Meanwhile, I finally opened the details to look how much I gained. Ding you received 11 upgrade points. One group of bait torpedo bombers, changes all other TB, one weapon point, three silver coins, two groups of D1A dive bombers. I think it would be nice to order my fairies some made uniforms just to please my eyes, and surely not because I don't want to be called a pedo because of imagining what is behind the leaves. Ding you received 4 made uniforms Ding you lost 400 gold coins, F. If they cost me that much, why don't I put them to use? I'll make them my pilots. Let them work. How much would a plane cost me? Ding one purpose received aircraft costs 10 platinum coins. You know what, I already lost 400 gold. I am F rich, I decided to save the money for now. I can buy them planes anytime. So for now I better to focus on getting moving. IJN Fuji, CV, level 27. Upgrade cap 50, FP, 17AA-20 Avenue, 50 Road. 50 AC-50 Aircraft Groups Fighter, A2 and Torpedo Bombers, Bay Dive Bombers, D1A Installed, 3 of 8 Installed, 
9 of 16 installed, 3 of 6 rapid deployment, LVL3, tenacity and bravery, LVL1, brave new world, LVL3, starts battle with 15% aircraft in air, every 30s shows your pathetic firepower, 5% bonus to FP and AA, on activation, launches special airstrike of A4N, B and D1A can be activated every one hour. Fairies, come here, I've got an idea on how to make use of you. The RGBW fairies rushed to me, and obediently waited for my next words. Do you have any names? I decided to check that first. No. They answered in unison. Can I name you then? Yes, master. The fairies appeared to radiate happiness. So simple to please, yet so gullible. If it was our 18 novel, they would be by now. White fairy will be named Willow. Blue fairy will be named Bennett. Green fairy will be named Grace. And finally, red fairy will be named Rin. From now on you are my maids. I expect you to fulfill your duties with dignity and fidelity. Yes, master. Once again, I felt sorry for having maids, made fetish, and not having that thing. However, my excitement didn't last long. The girls were here, standing without a job to do. No matter how cute those maids are, and no matter how much I cry because of wasting a huge sum of money on them, they are but a decoration right now. Well, let's just start doing something. I glanced at Elena and Albert, two side characters whom I almost forgot by now. How the hell did we end up here? Albert and Elena were standing on the other side of the camp. I don't know. We were just following Fuji. E, you signed up yourselves. Come here, and let's pack this camp. I think we better keep going. Going where, master? Did you not have enough walking through the forests? Albert glared at me. Stop that, Al. Fuji, can you at least tell what is your goal? We really don't get what you are doing. E. Only the time will tell. Come on, don't tell me you're just walking with no purpose in mind. A, eh? I ignored him and turned towards the maids. Help them pack our belongings and be ready to move out. Rin will be the senior. Yes, master. Let's do this, sisters. Ah, the maids may be a bit more petite than Alina so I was expecting that they will barely keep up with the rogues, but they packed our camp in ten minutes. While we, three adventurers, were chewing our food they cleared all the trash, uninstalled tents, packed the bags and cleared any traces of our stay. Alina and Albert didn't even have to lift a finger. So, what would you say? I mechanically said that to the other two. I guess they will be now doing every work in camp. Alina mechanically answered me. They're quite pretty, right? Albert was more active. We both looked at him like at a pile of garbage and moved away from him. Dirty pedophile. Master, should we clear all garbage? Willow asked me and glanced towards Albert. Yes, please do. I glanced at him as well. Wait. I did not mean anything bad. You. You just. Uh, your clothes are pretty. Eh, girls, we have some work to do. Rin looked like she was about to commit a murder. I would not even try to stop them. I can already guess what they are thinking. You a hole, why you just look at my clothes. Is my face not pretty? Due to his tactlessness, Albert was subjected to disgusted looks of six girls, and to earn our forgiveness. He was made the mule. Originally I was going to pack everything on our new voluntary servants. But Albert saved them. Good for him. I remember in the bag he carries were the maid's spare panties. He won't be alone. We finally continued moving. From high above, the aircraft reported to me our location. We were getting closer, and closer. V1 rewrite CH24. The consequences of negligence. AFP underscore right to yay. Another out of nowhere unsolvable formatting error. After we crossed yet another forest, we entered a small plain with a hill. I was going to use the hill as a staging point to scout the area and the next forest we are going to be passing through. Even without the need for scouting operations, 
The hill would be a nice safe spot for tonight's camp. Initially I was going to reach the hill by the evening, but since we now have eight more hands and legs, we made it to the hill by the noon, and since there was an opportunity to move even further, I decided it was worth a shot. Not only we did pass the hill, we even approached the edge of the forest and set up a camp there. Overall it would have been just a change of scenery, if not for the fact that my aircraft discovered a settlement deeper in the forest. From above the settlement looked clearly larger than what I encountered until now, and the way it looks did not resemble the crude settlements of the goblins but it barely resembled the human settlements too. If it was too far from looking like a human settlement, I'd bomb it into oblivion without asking a question. But since I can't clearly tell who lives there, I had to be cautious. I didn't think that this settlement would pose a direct threat, at least not a threat that would make us fall back all the way to the hill. So we set up our camp at the edge of the forest. Soon I had to abandon the scouting operation near the settlement, since with the nightfall the aircraft lose their visibility, and the visibility of the carrier. I didn't want to lose aircraft due to accidents, so I stopped the recon altogether. I realized that it was a grave mistake only after I heard aircraft flying above. I immediately checked what was going on and found out that they were spawned by the rapid deployment skill. It meant only one thing, a fight is inevitable, a woo-woo-woo. When I saw a movement nearby, I ordered bombers to attack. Two bombers made a half-barrel roll and steeply dived there. Both 250 kg bombs exploded near the targets. I immediately heard dinging but for now I dismissed the notifications. Because I didn't prepare beforehand, I needed at least five minutes to prepare the planes for takeoff. Hold them back while I prepare. I shouted to the woken up adventurers. No problem. You still have some machines in the air. We will hold back the attackers. A. It was clear that those two wouldn't handle the attackers by themselves. And the maids were unarmed. I sent in the aircraft. The fighters were trying to rain down some fire but they are much less dangerous than a proper Kaz. After the aircraft pulled up, two objects rushed out of the forest and attacked the rogues. Watch out, werewolves! E, better watch out for this. I shot a barrage of fox fires. None hit the enemies but the resulting confusion gave my companion some time to prepare. Alina's swordsmanship allowed her to quickly take down her opponent by slitting his throat while Albert was unlucky and got himself an elite opponent. At least in the sense that his werewolf was smart enough not to rush mindlessly. Together with Alina, Albert managed to block the werewolf's path to me, and it gave me enough time to start launching the aircraft. Those two werewolves may have been just scouts, or they were the only lucky survivors of my initial airstrike. It didn't actually matter now that I started deploying the aircraft to the flight deck. I started with the fighters, as they only needed light armament, and could be sent while the heavier payloads of the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers was being attached. While the aircraft were still on the elevators and were taxiing, the werewolves were needed to be stalled. You, take whatever you can and help them. I ordered my maids to join the fight. Soon more monsters will come and I was holding back my reserves, but considering how bad it goes on the rogue's side I will have to risk my plans. The maids have attracted the attention of the beast and that allowed the rogues to go offensive. Even that was not enough to kill the elite werewolf. The werewolves are much stronger than what I expected, I will have to test one of them after we are done. Meanwhile. The first planes started taking off. I still needed some time before they will regroup and set on course. Fuji, we need your help. A, eh, just a couple of minutes. The first groups of fighters started their attack, and surprised the second werewolf enough to give Albert an opening to exploit. The fighters were sent to gun down anything that tries to step out of the forest and under their cover the true firepower lined up at the catapults. When a new wave of the werewolves charged out of the forest, the torpedo bombers sorted. I aimed them to bomb what was in the forest, 
while the fighters would assist Alina and Albert with those who get away. All nine groups of bait torpedo bombers formed up above the battlefield and set course towards the incoming werewolves. Each bay carries 500 kilograms of bombs, which even with my incomplete upgrades counts as nine tons of bombs. That will make sure the enemy reinforcements will never arrive. After I sent my last flight I was able to join the fight. In the process I had to forbid the aircraft to land for rearmament while I'm in melee. At that moment I had a feeling that I forgot something important. Fuji, you are a complete idiot. Bang 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 I finally remembered that I have guns. I quickly corrected the flight's behavior, and the reorganized battle started yielding the bloody harvest. The aircrafts were devastating the forest and the flat area between it and us. While I was firing at what was already out of the plane's reach, and yet to reach Alina and Albert, my upgrades proved effective and soon the incoming waves were on the brink of obliteration. Under constant aerial bombardment, and strafing from the planes which already dropped their bombs, the werewolves were soon forced to retreat. Only then I could land the planes and rearm. Previously I was not expecting the attack and we almost regretted that. It is a miracle that nobody was injured. V1 rewrite CH25 The Fox and the Searching for Destiny After an intense combat I absolutely had to stay up and watch out for any more attacks from the forest. The rogues and the maids were let go to sleep while I spent the rest of the night preparing the aircraft. By the dawn the flights of fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers were lined up on the flight deck and fully prepared for takeoff at any moment. When the dawn only started coloring the sky, I ordered all engines to start up. The coughing and low humming noises soon turned into a thunderous roar, which was only becoming louder. Every plane was ordered to sortie soon. The flying armada grouped at two kilometers altitude and set course towards the werewolf settlement. When the aircraft were about to start the bombing, I aimed the 100 mm gun and began firing. I could only imagine what the monsters felt. In the middle of their lairs the explosions happened one after another. But that was only a prelude. Together with the rising sun, the sky was filled with an alien sound and the swarm of unknown birds dropped the bombs. One after another they exploded, leaving only death and terror. This will be a blood-earned lesson for them. Never screw with me. After I spent all in turret ammunition, I stopped the attack. All the aircraft already dropped their payload, and there was no reason to keep going. Since our camp was just a bunch of tents and a pot above a campfire we quickly packed it up and were once again ready to move. I wonder if they will attack us on our way. E, you doubt me? No, but there might be more than the ones you destroyed. E, I find your lack of faith. Disturbing. E, whatever, we should be going. Yes, yes. Why are you always commanding? A, do you want to take my place? I asked him and aimed all my weaponry at him. Why are you always acting like this? A. After I re-established my tyranny, we entered the forest, just before sending out the scouting flights. I checked the rewards for this cleanup. Ding you received 55 silver coins, 4 type 99 rifle, AA, 1 group of D1A dive bombers, 16 upgrade points, 1 level point, 1 steam catapult, epic, 1 arresting wires, epic, 1 group of A4N fighters. Changes all other F, 1 dual 100mm type 98, main gun, 1 steam catapult, elite, 3 weapon points IJN Fuji, CV, level 37, upgrade cap 60, FP, 20AA-20 Avenue, 50 Road, 53AC-60, aircraft groups fighters, A4N torpedo bombers, bay dive bombers, D1A installed, 4 of 8 installed, 9 of 16 installed, 4 of 6 main gun dual 100mm type 98 secondary guns 4 type 99 rifle, 4 max, anti-aircraft guns 7 type 99 rifle, 8 max flight deck occupied, 12 out of 120, arresting wires installed, 
Epic Steam Catapults 1, installed, Epic, Grade 5, 2, installed, Epic, Grade 3, 3, installed, Elite, 4, installed, Common, Steam Catapult Epic, Grade 5, minus 75% Catapult Reload Time, minus 75% Catapult Malfunction Chance, minus 50% G-Force Impact on Aircraft During the Launch, Epic, Grade 3, minus 65% Catapult Reload Time, minus 65% Catapult Malfunction Chance, minus 40% G-Force Impact on Aircraft During the Launch, Elite, minus 30% Catapult Reload Time, minus 30% Catapult Malfunction Chance, minus 15% G-Force Impact on Aircraft During the Launch, Arresting Wires Epic, minus 50% Chance of Missing the Wires on Landing, minus 50% Chance of Crashing on Landing. I spent all my weapon points into upgrading catapults so now I can almost immediately launch two planes. I am becoming a true aircraft carrier, not some shabby CVL. The first few hours in the forest passed without any incidents. I was expecting something bad to happen up to the point I found it to be a calm before a storm. Just a minute after I thought that it is suspicious that nothing happened to us. We found a broken carriage filled with old skeletons. Our examination revealed a lot of copper coins lying on the coach's seat. Regrettably, almost all of them went into the rogue scribbled budget. That little bun was enough to improve our mood and energize us to continue going forward. Well, that was enough for the rogues. The maids became energized after they had a few minutes to fluff me and rub against me while Alina and Albert were collecting the coins. Something tells me they are loyal not only because I am their savior. Well, any bauble of folly will keep the maids jolly. For a while we were just walking. We were not seeing any monster nearby, and the aerial recon did not show any major dangers ahead. It was almost boring. I take back what I thought. Better safe than sorry. All the extreme I wished for I decided to find by walking on a fallen tree's trunk. The mossy wood was slippery and dangerous enough for me to feel some rush, instead of any actually dangerous activity. As I climbed on the trunk and was about to start walking, I felt something. It was something like a pulse, or like a premonition. I felt the direction it came from easily and rushed there. Fuji, where are you running? Elena was trying to chase me but she can't run as fast. Master, what are you searching? Willow turned herself into fairy and was flying beside me. I was just running. I ran for two or three minutes before I encountered what was calling me. It was just a small altar in the middle of the forest. I might not recognize it but I feel that this altar is very familiar. I offered my prey and suddenly felt my insides warm. It is the same feeling I have when I feel my luck increasing, or when my luck saves me from bad things. The altar appeared small enough to be carried, so I called out to Willow. Willow, call the other maids at once. I want this altar taken with us. Yes, master. With pleasure. She was shining with happiness. She is shining from happiness, right? I decided not to waste my time for nothing and kept on praying until the fairies arrived and took the altar with us. Fuji, I know you can be weird, but let me ask you one thing. Are you crazy? Mother was not happy. Whatever. I will place it by the house. What house? Albert tilted his head after my statement. When a little cute fox like me tilts her head. It is kawaii. When an unshaved monkey does that, it is disgusting. I am so f happy I am a sweet little fox. Do you two want to live in the tent forever? I smiled at them. While the two adventurers were reflecting on what I just said I continued walking towards the setting sun. V1 rewrite. CH. 26. Walking deeper into the forest announcement first of all. Don't get surprised if I suddenly stop writing. Rather. Thank hashtag USA and hashtag EU for hashtag human rights violation. After the recent events I more or less confirmed that my air power is my everything, and that I must pay utmost attention to strengthening it. 
I also discovered that Brave New World skill also may affect the aircraft I receive from rewards, so a bit later I will spend the unused gold to level up the skill. For a while I even felt like I am invincible, I have guns, the absolute game caner for medieval, I have aircraft, the absolute game caner for 20th century warfare, and I have a freaking load of HP and armor, the absolute game caner for any kind of situation. It was only natural I was considering going to the capital and kicking a king out of his seat. Luckily, I remembered in time that we are but humble fugitives, going somewhere only I know where to find a nice place I'd call home and be sure nobody will kick me out. I jumped on a large trunk and tried to look what is further. Hey, what have you found? Albert immediately tried to get the most recent news from their direct creator. Nothing but trees? We are in the middle of this forest. Up until now we only encountered trees, trees, and occasional wolves and goblins. Nothing that I wouldn't expect from a forest. From above I also could only see trees up until the horizon. Whatever not trees we encountered up until now were so minuscule that I didn't even get rewards for defeating them. Alina and Albert put down the bags that constitute our current possessions and sat down for a short chat while I am preparing a new consorti. Willow and Bennett carry the altar I found, while Grace is our lookout for the cases I myself don't spot anything in time. The only one left, Rin, was standing by the trunk I stood on. She has the most important task. Master, would you like me to princess carry you? She constantly tries to trick me into being carried in her hands but if I would have wanted that, I'd ask Alina. At least Alina's strong arms are better suited for that. I jumped off the trunk and signaled the others to continue moving. No, thank you. My current position is comfortable enough. I was sitting at a vantage point, also called Rin's shoulders. I was so tall right now, that if Albert was slightly taller, I'd be looking into his eyes. The constant green mass I was seeing around myself was contributing a lot to me dozing off. I was about to do so, but my fighters reported that they detected a couple of wyverns. It would be a shame to let the loot fly away, right? Albert, Alina you know what I am thinking about? You either think about teasing us, or about destroying an entire kingdom. Not that he was too far from the truth. Over there you can find two wyverns. You got me? I showed them the heading and asked if they understood me. And why are you telling that to us? Elena still didn't get me. I want you to loot them. Why don't you do something by yourself? At least once? Eh, okay. I grabbed a rock. I did something by myself. Now go and take my loot. And what was I expecting? A. My new fighters. The A4N were faster than my previous fighters, allowing me to reinforce my flights faster, or to shoot down wyverns in even more merciless ways. While the rogues were hurrying ahead to dismantle the wyverns and bring back the spoils of war, the maids and I were leisurely walking in the same direction. When we were around halfway there, we saw two orcs on our way, though. They were much smaller than the one I encountered near the capital. Stay here. I will need some time for research. Yes, master. Rin was confused by my words but the maids obediently stood and waited. boo ha ra ra Ha ha ha. boo ha ra ra Whatever you say there, you are just two walking corpses. Bang bang I fired two dummy shots and knocked them down. While the orcs were incapacitated. I proceeded with vivisection. I tested how easy would the blade cut an orc's skin, muscle, and bone. Before it died, I also cut open its belly. The subject was still alive by the time I confirmed for myself that the Najanata doesn't cut only through tempered steel. I was about to call it a day, when I remembered some novels I was reading. I didn't ask anybody if there was a magic core, a magic stone, or whatever, in the monsters. It is considered an expensive loot, so if I can get my hands on it, regrettably, there were none. When I turned towards the other subject, I saw it trying to crawl away, stopped only by the maids sitting down on its back. Thanks, Ladies Tilda. 
The four frightened girls nodded hurriedly, and rushed away, hiding behind opaque objects. The second subject was cut from the back, providing me with additional insights in the orc anatomy. M Master. Woe. Do you leak a bath? All four maids were trembling for a long time afterwards. Rin tried to offer to carry me but considering how much she was shaking, I guess she offered that only because I am her master. On our way we walked into a lake, and the natural thing to do for me was to take a bath. The blood on me was unpleasant. At the lake I undressed and ran to the water, and a second before I broke the shining mirror, I was picked up and carried there. No swimming for me. Rin and Grace washed me, while Willow was washing my clothes. Cheers and giggles could be heard all over the lake, since after the fairies started cuddling me again, they forgot about how drenched in blood I was. The only sad face out here was Bennett, who was sitting in reed and guarding the uniforms. Well, yes, I'm being washed by naked cute girls. I can even feel how hot my face is and how a certain senior rubs her beak up against my back, foo you, it's done, master. She barely finished the phrase by the time I was already rushing towards the coast, since I was not allowed to swim around, I feel too playful to just sit down and wait. Master, please, at least take a towel. Bennett tried to chase me, and couldn't catch up with me neither when I was still in the lake nor when we started running around on the grass. What are you doing? A male voice. I turned my head towards its source and die. You pervert. Albert. You're a dead man. V1 rewrite. CH27. A not abandoned trail. Why am I always the one who carries your ass? Albert grumbled, as always. This time, however, it was because he was found guilty of being a pervert. His red cheeks can confirm that. I stopped slapping him only after both of my hands started to hurt. Only then I was merciful enough to tell the maids to start slapping him for me. Some people may think that being in the forest is great, breathing a fresh forest air, fishing, camping. For me it was becoming the worst of nightmares. It was only my second day here but I can feel getting sick from just looking at this green color. I was not feeling comfortable also due to the local wildlife. Large monsters are yet to try attacking us but the goblins and the wolves create a lot of distraction. At least I know that soon I might start seeing something further than 10 meters in front, since my aircraft found planes not far away from here, the same planes that are cleared around large settlements. Meanwhile, we walked into a wall of plants. With my fox fires I burned them, and found a cave covered behind, I was going there with Alina to find out if there is something useful, while Albert was tasked with guarding the maids. Alina appeared to be both more skilled, and much more pleasant, as a former male, it would be a shame not to accidentally touch her a time or two while we are in the dark cave. If this monkey dares to grope you, don't be shy to kick him in the balls, don't worry. I will be sure to castrate him for any of his pervert deeds. I assured my maids and went into the cave. After I made sure that there was a fine distance of 20 meters between them, I hurried after Alina. The cave appeared to be inhabited and somewhat maintained. There were old wooden boxes and empty bags. From the way it was hidden and contains space for a ton of stuff, I felt like it was used as a smuggling outpost. After we walked for almost a kilometer, we encountered another green wall. This time I decided not to burn everything to ashes but to accurately cut our way out. If my assumptions are correct, we shortened our traveling time by a couple of hours. I'll wait here, go bring the others. Elena decided to guard this place and I will have to walk back by myself. Well, I am faster after all. Almost an hour later we continued walking down the smuggler's trail. The entire area was scouted from above several times by now, so it will be hard to jeopardize my planning. Or so I thought. Just as we crossed some bushes, we have walked into a ravine. While it would be easy to cross it, right now we have an altar which is actually not that light to drag it up and down. In my former plan we would have walked around without having to cross anything at all, 
but now going around would take us a few more hours. After a little brainstorming I came up with an unorthodox idea of using my flight deck as a bridge. The ravine is 20 meters wide and my meter long little accessory would not be enough to cover it but then I thought about the fact that it is not exactly connected to me with any struts. The flight deck rigging is just a plain board with superstructure on it. Usually it just hangs by my side, tied by a silk strip. First things first, I decided to try the least possible scenario. My genius plan was to imagine it being 20 meter long and hope that it works out. Of course that was a failure. Neither my deck could be used as floating board to carry everything around. It just sticks close to me and refuses to leave. My next idea was the most unorthodox, but some out of the box thinking can prove the most fruitful. The final plan was successful from the start. Another step. I, another step. Careful, don't step that far. We build a little tower from the rogues and I was at its top. All of our cargo was placed on the flight deck, and due to its unique stubbornness, it didn't fall from the weight. Like that we were able to transfer all our stuff across the ravine. We lost only an hour. We are still ahead of my schedule. If everything goes well, within three hours we will come out of the forest. When we were very close to our today's goal, we walked into a group of people. Not the good kind of people. If you surrender, we might just sell you into slavery instead of killing. The smugglers have shown up and were very angry that someone found their trail. Their leader stepped forth with a short sword aimed at us. Now was the question. Talk with them, or, listen, brother. We have no reason to fight. We are not welcome in the kingdom too, you know? I tried persuading them. If so, then how the hell you came here? The trail was far away from any landmark and finding it out of coincidence would be suspicious, but we just did. You know, there is a shady guy in the forest, Kalga, or something. We chose the least conspicuous way, and had no idea it's yours. For now this goes good. Oh my, that a hole drove away another bunch of people? The duke's infamy went as far as to the deepest parts of this forest. I see that you get what I say, neither you nor I get anything good out of beating each other, so how about we just pretend we didn't see each other and go do our own business. Please, let it work out. Fine. All right lads, let him pass. I just hope I won't regret that. The smuggler was still suspicious, but his friends sheathed their swords. I doubt we'd ever cross our paths again. I don't want to return into this forest in the slightest. But, if we ever walk into each other again, I hope we will have some mutually beneficial business. I showed him my most sincere business smile. You bet, Foxkin. He showed a smile of his own. We both sensed a slight of profit from our meeting. Without any more issues we finally walked out of the forest and were ready to keep moving forward. V1 rewrite CH28 mastering the air warfare after we left the green hell, the so-called forest. I was expecting our lives to change for the best. There were no wolves and no other worthless monsters that didn't yield a single upgrade point, and ahead of us were huge endless plains, the same kind that exists around every town and city of this world. However, the initial optimism faded soon. We already walked for three or four days with only stopping for a night. Alina and Alba were somewhat content, since they were no longer jumping up at every rustle, but the maids were getting tired of the constant movement. Their cheerfulness and vigor turned into weak attempts at keeping themselves busy to stop thinking about having to walk again as the dawn breaks. Seeing that my companions were tired of our nomadic lifestyle, I decided to let her set up a temporary camp and under this excuse I started reflecting on my own performance. In the end I reached one conclusion, I don't control aircraft groups efficiently. Thus begun my first ever exercises, I divided my air power into two groups, defending, with three fighter groups, and attacking with the rest of my air power. I tried simulating a scenario of mass attack from the air, it might be applied to ground attacks as well. 
My goal is to launch the fighters as fast as I can and intercept enemy forces. Considering that my normal reaction time is more than 10 minutes, I should give the attackers 5 minutes before they can bomb me. The first few tries I failed miserably. The bombers were catching my interceptors still on the deck, or the attacking group was overwhelming the few scrambled fighters at takeoff. When I expended the fuel, I sent the groups for a short rest. Then began the new stage of my suffering, a mess landing. Sometimes I was messing up the circling patterns and the landing clearances. I even had an aircraft crash on landing. However, I was not discouraged. If I ever want to best my enemies I must make sure that I can launch my air attacks rapidly and defend myself as fast. With each try I was getting better results. While normally aircraft carriers have at least vague knowledge on how to operate their aircraft, I have none. There are no experienced officers available to me, and I never was a carrier in my human life and I had no practice until now. I either launch my aircraft before the fight, or I have a lot of time to do that. The camp adjusted to my shenanigans within an hour. My cheerleading team of fairies was trying their best to support me, while Alina and Albert were cooking, cleaning and doing everything else. Of course, I was reflecting on the performance and my mistakes. I was playing around with the fighter refuel and rearmament patterns with the initial interception sorties, and after my fifteenth try I managed to intercept the attackers before they reached me. I decided to try a couple more times to make sure I have better capabilities. Only after I was satisfied with the results I continued the exercises. The scenario has outlived itself, as I was just repeating the same thing until I got the correct results. The next scenario was rapid deployment of attack aircraft. While I have only four flights of fighters, and so I can launch all of them within two minutes if needed, my bombing capabilities include three times more planes. And unlike the fighters they need their bombs and torpedoes loaded which takes a lot of time. I know that it would be nice to be able to launch them fast but also I need to learn how to make coordinated air strikes. I started with the most basic thing, safely deploying the aircraft on deck. While it sounds easy, it requires me to safely arm and fuel the planes in the hangar, and then lift them up to the flight deck. A plane, a two, a flight, that would be easy. A freaking armada of aircraft is not. The next stage of the exercise was the actual takeoff and landing procedure. My second rapid deployment exercise was not as bad as the first scenario. Overall, I lost only three planes and had one catapult malfunction. The fourth catapult is of the worst quality so it was expected. Soon enough I was capable of swift launching the majority of my craft. With this out of the way I began preparing for coordinated airstrike exercise. It was all about having the attack flights gather above me, without colliding, and without interfering with the newly launched aircraft. While I was busy training with the bombers, I sent my fighters to search for a suitable target. Somewhere in the forest I discovered a huge goblin settlement. Those vermin really did annoy me in the forest so it was the time for my revenge. They might even yield me a point. The settlement has a form vaguely looking like a ship, so my decision was to simulate attacking a warship. I pre-planned the locations where a warship would have AA guns and where it would have its critical systems. That would be a nice way to have some fun, train and destroy the green FS. I executed four airstrikes, some were only flying over the settlement to drain low altitude attacks with torpedo bombers, some were dive bombing the citadel, and after I was done fooling around, I prepared for the final touch. All planes were loaded with bombs and prepared for carpet bombing. While the planes were preparing, climbing and setting their course. I began artillery exercise. Not that firing a bunch of rifles and two 100mm guns can do something to the remnants of the goblin village. While the strike itself was successful, I was not satisfied because if there would be any AA guns, my box formation would be annihilated. Also, it is hard to maintain all of them circling above me, guide the planes for landing, and making sure they are not hitting each other while taxiing on the deck. The exercise continues. 
The entire bundle of exercises took the entire day. But that was not all. I had a night exercise planned after that. In the end I cancelled it because it was the time to continue moving forward. In between the exercises I found an interesting place that perfectly suited my needs. A picturesque cliff with a large bay nearby. The only thing that may have interfered with my plans was an old shabby castle. A castle under the Duke's flag. V1 rewrite CH29. The act of aggression while we were on our way towards the location I chose for my future home. I decided to go buy some stuff we would be using while I am in the process of construction. We went to a village to buy some weapons, food, and new tents. The latter because I was getting sick of seeing the patches on our current tents. The village we entered was a relatively small settlement with nothing outstanding about it, aside from an adventurer's guild's branch office. It was decided that Albert will go buy some weapons with the maids while Alina and I will be buying food and equipment. We plan to meet at the guild in the end and move on to the destination. Simple as that. Since I was with Mother Alina, we finished buying groceries way faster than Albert was playing with his toys and licking over my maids. While we were waiting for him, Alina suggested us to go and take the rewards from some of the previous quests. When we entered, the guild was as empty as it could get and only a clerk was sitting somewhere in a corner and reading a third-rate novel. Hello, can you help us? At Elena's call, the clerk mumbled something about stupid brain-head adventurers, and reluctantly stood up to approach the registry. What would you like to do here? The clerk prepared some blanks. We want to check what rewards we have and if there are any unfinished quests assigned. Elena took the initiative and gave the clerk our tokens. For a second the clerk's eyes widened but she immediately began processing our request. Please, wait a moment. The clerk stood up and headed to a back door. Why do you need to do that? I need to check with the main office. They process everything. The equipment is not installed in this building, so can you wait a couple of minutes? See? When the clerk walked outside I whispered to Alina, be ready for a fight. Something is not right. I was very suspicious of this. We were dealing with the branch offices here and there, but we were yet to see something like that. Not to mention, the clerk was way too eager to help us after she saw the tokens. Despite her confusion, Alina put her hand on the hilt. When the clerk returned she gave us the papers with the information we requested. Next she started talking nonsense, making suggestions about having dinner in the guild, and other stuff that was outright weird to see from an unmotivated employee. I decided to no longer tolerate this. I just ignored the clerk and headed towards the exit with Alina in tow, before the clerk got in our way. We hurried outside. Outside were standing twenty village guards, and some people from militia. Neither of them looked friendly. Stop right now, you are under arrest for murder. Surrender yourselves peacefully or prepare to die. In a flash, I tried to recollect if I ever did anything close to murder, but remembered nothing, like, I am fluffy innocent fox. How could I ever do anything bad? However, now was not the time to be talking back and forth. The people in front of me were not exactly interested in hearing me out. I was wondering if I should knock them down with the Nejanata's Poland karate tricks I've learned in the grade school, but then I saw the ducal insignias on the guards' shields. What a brave talk. My blood started boiling. I have tolerated quite a lot of things that guy tried to do to me for almost no apparent reason, but now he put the murder attack on me. Well, if he wants it so much, then why not give him a good reason? However, this line of reasoning didn't last long. Master, run while you can. I heard Bennett's voice. One last chance to surrender, beast. With each their word my face grimaced more and more. I saw that my maids, and a useless male servant, were already apprehended. Alina, take cover when it begins. I murmured to her and summoned the gear. At that, I snapped. Surrender yourselves, you filth. You dared hurting my servants and friends, you better not to test my patience. Men, catch this monster. 
the guards charged. So, be it. Bang 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 soon it was over. I never showed mercy to them. Those who have surrendered were killed first. Those who decided fighting me, either faced their fast death, or were cut in pieces. My rage had blinded me. All that was left after my rampage were bodies and my servants. Until now I may have done some nasty things to that duke, but what happened today had buried any hopes of resolving the tiny disputes we had. It was war, war, until my victory. Originally I was going to take the little cozy cliff by the sea with my words and petty tricks, like throwing the defenders out through brute force. But now I had a very good reason to just raise the castle altogether. However, this kit soon is generous, and only prepared the air arm to bomb the sea out of them. Moreover, this kit soon is so generous, that she sent Albert to negotiate the terms of complete surrender of the castle before bombing the sea out of them. On behalf of the most graceful Lady Fuji, we offer you to surrender the castle. If you decide to accept our offer, we guarantee your safety and allow you to leave the castle with all your weapons and supplies. If you decide to refuse, be ready for the inevitable death. Just when he finished his words I fired two 100mm shells right in front of the gate. Of course. The speech itself was written by me. You have six hours to make your decision. Every person who leaves the castle without fighting will have the guarantees of safety as long as they don't try fighting. After that he returned, I felt both relieved and disappointed. Looks like I still didn't forgive how he was gazing over my gorgeous body with his perverted eyes. Then, we camped outside the castle. Some of the soldiers were smart enough to flee but that was only a small part of the garrison. The sun set and the defenders lit up the torches. Feeling the approaching doom, the archers took positions on the walls. The garrison was preparing to fight the assaulting force of me, and six people by my side. But my military techniques were much more advanced than foolish climbing the walls to get an arrow in the knee. The calm quiet of the night was overwhelmed by the sudden thunder of starting engines, as I ordered to sortie. After all my planes were in the air, I ordered them to group. Torpedo bombers set course to carpet bomb the castle while dive bombers were to make precise attacks on key nodes of enemy defenses. My guns prepared to fire too. With the moon high in the sky, I declared the war. Tora, Tora, Tora. V1 rewrite CH30 The birth of a legend on my mark. The entire power I accumulated fell upon the castle. While my aircraft were still on their way to drop the payload, I opened fire with the main guns. Thanks to the decreased amount of powder I was using, the shots were being fired at high arcs, allowing me to target the inner territory of the castle, even though I was close. The soldiers were left with no option but to approach the walls where my shells were not landing and the gatehouse, which would block the shells. As the shelling came to an end with no targets to fire at, the defenders started preparing to fight us as we proceed with the attack. The archers were put on the walls together with some melee soldiers, while the majority of the troops were deployed right behind the gatehouse to cut us down should we try to break through the gates. It was just as I anticipated. Their training did not include the third option. The air. Boom 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 the torpedo bombers dropped their payload all the way from the gatehouse to the opposite end of the castle, killing almost all of the infantry below the walls. The next step was the dive bombers attack on the towers and buildings. As the castle plunged into chaos, I ordered all of my planes to return for resupply. After the first wave turned the castle into ruins, the second wave was supposed to finish off the survivors. However, I just had the urge to go and do something myself. The aircraft were sent below the deck, while I proceeded towards the castle. There was barely anything to do at this point, so I casually walked towards the crumbled remnants of walls. I was already expecting to enter the castle without any resistance when I heard a sound. Ping. A small drop is the omen of a coming rain, like that. An arrow was an omen of them shooting at me. A hailstorm of arrows silently fell on me, ricocheting from my armor. After they saw that nothing happened to me, the archers tried firing several fire arrows, with the same result. 
I could only imagine their faces when they expected to kill me with their first salvo, only to find out that I am armored enough to ignore their best attempts. Perhaps they thought that I would no longer be able to fight back since I already stopped firing and approached, and that may be the reason why they were so fearless as to stop hiding behind the battlements. To their greatest regret, they underestimated my fighting abilities as well as my ammo stowage. By this time I was indeed low on main gun ammo, though I had a full ammo for the rifles. With not so precise shots I started firing rifles at the walls. I started steadily cleaning up the walls with rifle shots, and took down most of the defenders there, before the remaining ones fled down behind the walls cover. I was the only one left in the vicinity. Scaling the walls was the last thing I wanted to do, so I just brute forced my way into the castle by breaking the gates. When the entrance was breached, the remaining defenders raised a battle cry and ran at me. Bang 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 I started discharging rifles at the defenders. Neither the chain mail, nor the occasional plate armor, could stop the rifle rounds. If there were more defenders, they would have stood a chance at getting closer to me and tasting my nage nata. But the history does not accept the if. The few survivors surrendered immediately after witnessing the last show of destruction, and I let them escape the castle. Soon after the castle was taken, I led the others inside, and we made our camp in the castle, among the moon landscape of craters and shattered stone. The morning we met at the walls, the duke's forces were surprisingly quick to react. I was brushing my teeth, when their negotiator walked towards the remnants of the gatehouse. Surrender yourselves, you scumbags, you are surrounded. Oh my! What a civilized way to start the conversation, Fuji. They have ships. We have no way to escape. Alina was panicking after she returned from the other side of the castle. Indeed. You are well prepared for this. At least that's what you are thinking. I decided to keep them busy while I execute my plan. You have no way to escape, beast. If you surrender now, his grace might be merciful enough to sell you into slavery instead of killing. The negotiator continued offering us the most beneficial terms, without even considering the fact that I took this castle all by myself within a single night. From what I know, my ammo stowage is being respawned every 24 hours, so I was currently low on ammo. At least for the MVP 100mm guns. The Duke's forces have around 500 men, and their fleet consists of 20 ships. For such a tiny castle that was ridiculous. And after considering my ammo situation, we were clearly in a tricky situation. But I was not wasting the time for no reason. I closed my eyes and shouted. Whatever you have, come and test if you are really capable of defeating the pride of Sigura Empire. Our agar a ship's horn thundered in a distance. My trump card has finally arrived. All planes, sortie at once. The last of Japanese carriers. The mighty IJN Fuji showed herself at last. I had to steam at full ahead to reach this place by the morning. Some aircraft were sorted beforehand, and as soon as the carrier entered our sight, four flights of dive bombers flew over us and dropped their bombs right on top of the enemy formations. Simultaneously, the pairs of torpedo bombers began their attack runs and dropped torpedoes. I went with an overkill both because I was cautious of the entirety of the possible outcomes, and because I simply wanted to let my torpedo bombers do their actual job. The results are not worth mentioning, because no wooden ship can survive two torpedoes hitting it. After dropping their bombs, the fighters and dive bombers started to circle above the enemy, while occasionally diving to rain down machine gun fire on the infantry. The enemy soon surrendered and the enemy negotiator was the first one to do that. In face of his crimes, or rather because he already insulted me, I hanged him. This time I did not let the enemies run away, I made them all surrender themselves, and even captured the enemy commander. When I was going to interrogate him, Elena approached me. When I turned towards her, I heard a shout from behind. Sister, why are you here? The commander shouted at her. Fuji let him go. This idiot is mine. E, you are a damn disgrace to our family. 
You sided with this criminal scum. The commander shouted on top of his lungs. And who said to you that she is a criminal, father? The one who sends people to their death like it's none of his concern? Elena was getting mad to the point when I myself wouldn't dare standing in the way. Also, I felt butterflies in my stomach when she at least mentioned her supporting me. The two's talk was becoming more and more intense, and soon I understood that I would have no time to interrogate the commander before Elena strangles him. Elena, how many children does the Duke have? The Duke? We are both standing in front of you. There are no legitimate children aside from us. E. And you just told that to this mongrel? The commander glared at me, but I was so calm that I only spared a glance to him. So, if we kill him and the duke, we will have an actual duchess. That is quite a warped logic you have, but I have no objections. Alina was happy to accept my words. No need to tell the commander's fate. After the recent events, I decided that I will continue with doing whatever I want. Because we are already enemies of the state, why don't we just do whatever we please? I gain myself a nice piece of land, I have my carrier on the roadstead and I have my opportunity to gain political influence. Everything is going way too good for me. As I was about to start rampaging to harvest some upgrade points, the king made his move. The next day after the castle was defended by me, another person has arrived to my gatehouse. The courier said only one phrase, the king offers you to come to the negotiation with both the kingdom and the dukedom. V1 rewrite CH31 Par in Pam non habet imperium announcement from this moment. I would rewrite only the parts that cause me to cringe at sight. You are welcome to suggest the original chapters that need a rewrite. After many days of work Fuji and her companions have settled down in an abandoned castle, and started to clear the rubble Fuji created during her Operation Coastal Storm. At least that's what historians should say about my current situation. While I should be going to the meeting with the king, I decided to let them come to me. This blatant Liz majesty can only be committed because right now I am speaking from the position of somebody who doesn't relate to the kingdom, and owns an aircraft carrier. Not to mention that I don't care about their negotiations, because all this trouble was created by themselves. What I am concerned about is that I have a huge pile of rocks which I have no use for. That is why I decided to start with building myself a huge harbour made of rock. While I could clean the area just by throwing the rocks down into the sea, my plan was to make a proper, good harbour for my carrier to anchor safely and then look pretty intimidating. The clearing work took priority, because it will take a few weeks until we will be able to build ourselves a proper house, mostly due to the rocks lying around. Even if I make a harbour, there are also the stone walls and other undesirable structures, so as the next step I already decided to make a stone foundation for my house. Meanwhile, I was looking around from the bow. From above the ship I could safely glare at this pitiful world with disdain. I am the master of the seas around my little piece of land, and while it is exciting to be the strongest, I still wonder what I can do with my possessions. I wonder what is my actual goal and where will I arrive? While I still had my mind away from the reality I decided to check what I gained after the previous fights. Ding you received three skill points, one type 99 rifle, AA, 60 upgrade points, 120 silver coins, one steam catapult, common, one level point, two groups of A5N fighters, one weapon point, two groups of DEA dive bombers, one arrest in wires, common, one steam catapult, elite, IJN Fuji, CV, level 47, upgrade cap 70, FP, 30AA-30 Avenue, 70 Road, 63AC-70, aircraft groups fighters, A5N torpedo bombers, bay dive bombers, DEA installed, 6 of 8 installed, 9 of 16 ready. 6 of 6 Weapons Systems Main Gun Dual 100mm Type 98 Secondary Guns 4 Type 99 Rifle, 4 Max, Anti-Aircraft Guns 8 Type 99 Rifle, 
8 Max, Flight Deck Ready Steam Catapults 1, installed, Epic, Grade 5, 2, installed, Epic, Grade 4, 3, installed, Elite, 4, installed, Elite, Arresting Wires installed, Epic Rapid Deployment, LVL 5, Tenacity and Bravery, LVL 2, Brave New World, LVL-4 starts battle with 25% aircraft in air every 30s shows your pathetic firepower, 10% bonus to FP and AA, on activation, launches special airstrike of A5N, B4 Y and DEA can be activated every 1 hour, new powers open new possibilities with the new air warfare capabilities I have the ability to control the entire area without issues so I already have another trump guard against the duke. However, first I needed to deal with a minor nuisance called King. Several days after my blatant ignoring of his majesty's goodwill, another messenger told me that the king wants to see me. Since my neglection was not understood properly, I voiced it. If he wants to see me, good for him. I am not his servant, and I have many things to do. If he really wants to meet me that much, do tell him to come here himself. I even have a nice tent where he can sit down. It was a clear challenge to the authorities, and also a way to test the king's intentions. The king didn't make me wait for him for too long. A week later he arrived with a small fleet of ships. His own ship was about 30 meters and that was surprising, considering how ancient that thing looked. The king arrived full ahead to my hub but it took him much longer to get up the cliff. We saw him arriving, but since I am a lazy bum, I didn't care. Meanwhile we cleaned around the camp, cooked some food and I had some time to perform a couple of air stunts. When the king finished climbing the cliff, he did not try to look imposing or majestic. He already understood that he looked very pathetic all drenched in sweat and out of breath. To mock him even further, I might have tried greeting him like an empress or something like that, but I already challenged him this much, so I decided not to test my luck. Greetings, Foxkin. We are King Lucius Feltrabant. How can we address you? An old man was looking imposing even after all the traveling he had to make on his own. I am Fuji, Fuji of the Sigura Empire. I never heard of such a nation. Would you tell me about it? He showed a simple curtsy of asking about the country of origin. A lot of irrelevant chatter later. I guess you understand why we wanted to meet you, ever since you first showed up. K, first you want to recruit me for my strength, and now you wonder if I will become your vassal because I grabbed myself a piece of land. Yes, what is your answer? He tried his best to hide his surprise. I might have hit what he was trying to cover up hoping that I am not a cynical kid soon. I hope you understand that I will not be just falling on my knees and licking your feet because you are a king. I said that and looked towards the carrier, you certainly not giving a feeling of somebody that petty, but keep in mind, even though you have the strength, remember that we still are the sovereign of this land. The king was a bit salty from my words. I reckon you are tired after all this traveling. Perhaps we can work out that pile of insults your vassal showered me with, while we have a cup of tea? For now I decided to give a chance to the negotiations. V1 rewrite CH34. Shock and awe another week has passed on my deconstruction site. Through my diplomatic skills I convinced the Count and several other nobles to sign some surely not shady agreements with me. Alina was the first to sign such an agreement. Each of the signatory nobles has sent me some workers and started supplying me with stone and wood for the construction site. The Count also sent me his best architect, who started sorting through my plans and drafts to create myself a good home. His first drafts made me delighted. From my bitty drawing he managed to develop an actually nice project. In the end my home will be a multi-leveled castle with a palace on its second level. The third level will be a tightly protected sanctuary with a small Japanese house for me and my closest servants. 
The first level will be a small town where the people will live. A medieval styled wall and towers would be surrounding the first level, while the second and the third levels would be more like the Japanese styled castles. The project took in consideration both topology of this cliff and the my preferences. It is an actual fortress and simultaneously a majestic palace. The construction of the fortifications will only take several months because the project was well prepared. The actual buildings will be finished within six months after the fortifications. As soon as the project was approved, I sent the commissioned workforce to start the earthworks to set up the foundation for the first level. Together with the successful first steps at building myself a nice house, I also succeeded in making the local nobles take me into consideration, but because I was not too keen on dealing with them, I started preparing for Alina to be doing the inter-noble politics in my stead, however, to make my puppet duchess an actually viable puppet I needed to make the nobles completely agree with me. While there are many ways to convince the lascivious greedy nobles, I chose the fastest. I scheduled a small gathering for the local nobles, including those who did not align themselves with me, and offered them to show off their power in a peaceful seaside town. It was one of the main maritime trade hubs and its harbour was so large that it could even fit the carrier. I expected the nobles to bring their available or hired fleets to show off. After all, a noble coming to this port would pay no fees for docking their ships. I did not miscalculate, and the day the gathering started, all nobles who had at least some money hired or sailed the most powerful of their warships but the nobles that sided with me brought nothing but shabby old scraps. Despite that, the harbour was filled with ships to the brim and it looked like a fleet gathered for a major naval offensive. Since it was a matter of honour, I also gathered myself a small fleet of three triremes. This will be an interesting show. My grinning must have been so apparent that some of the nobles started whispering amongst themselves. They started to think that I sailed those three splits here thinking that I can impress someone with my might. Unsurprisingly, the pocket duchess was the one to shoulder this. You have a wonderful fleet, Lady Alina. One of the nobles approached Alina and ironically said that to her. Oh, sorry. Those are not my ships. You don't need to worry. The ships are a curtsy of Sir Dervin. Fuji asked them to sail here. I did not tell anybody the reason for those ships to arrive here, though it was clear, for the people related, that I did it with nothing good on my mind. Ha ha ha! This lady cannot even walk without her master's approval. They are so poor. Why did we even waste our time on this? Some of the nobles started laughing at my sacrifice to the goddess of seas, or god, whatever. But, as we all know, the one who laughs the last. When a lot of nobles gathered on the pier, I stopped idling somewhere in an armchair and prepared for a short speech. Welcome to the conference where I will put forth the next Duke of Caliga. I don't know what lowly creatures such as humans like, so I decided to give you a little show. A clamor arose when the nobles were insulted right into their faces by whom they considered to be lower than them. How dare you! not only a commoner, but also a beast, go away, you and your pet the excuse of a noble, you are lower than the ground, stop talking big, before I skin you, I was pleased with their reaction, that was exactly what I needed, you dared saying something? I said that in exaggeratedly calm voice, and I the entire noble crowd, the entirety of the nobles were taken aback by my brazen and impudent attitude, the confusion did not last long, since some of the nobles stepped away from the main crowd, those were the ones who understood that the brown mass was about to hit the fan, the rest of the nobles started glaring at me and plotting to send their guards at me. Only one of them had the guts and accepted the challenge, he walked out towards me with his sword aimed at me. Come here, I will end your misery. He was so enraged that his saliva started dripping. Oh my! Come at me, lowborn. At my taunt the noble went berserk. Now that was completely legitimate self-defense. I created some weakened fox fires and launched them into his face. 
Anne with a noble's head was caught in flames and his face got burnt, while the Count's servants on standby were taking away the maimed. I once again looked at the nobles with indifferent A's. Anyone else? And with the same indifference I asked them. I am surprised that such lower beings as humans keep acting all that arrogant in front of me. It looks like you are yet to learn your lesson, since you still dare to stand in front of me. Then let me show you the vast difference in strength between us. I flicked my fingers vroom 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 on my signal. The humming noises of my dive bombers and their escorts filled the surroundings. One by one, all of my bombers flipped in the air and started falling down like eagles which found their prey. The bombs have landed on top of the prides of those nobles and torn apart the mighty hulls of their wooden ships. While the nobles trembled at the sight of destruction, in the distance lurked silhouettes of a large group of torpedo bombers which began their attack run. One by one they descended to an altitude where they barely avoided the waves, and dropped their torpedoes. Vroom then, with a deafening noise they flashed above us. The remaining scrap wood was sent to the bottom of the harbor by the torpedoes. When the waves settled around the sinking ships, I turned my head towards the nobles and asked with a frightening voice. Does anyone else of you want to test my powers? V1 rewrite CH35 A distant call the consequences of my little show were predictable. The nobles both lost their attack power in case of a war, and were much more approachable when it came to signing perfectly equal treaties. While I was looking at the shipwrecks, I was approached by Alina. Was that actually necessary? She was more displeased than angry. If I want to make them understand how much stronger I am, then such things must always be considered. They must never even dare thinking of opposing me, or do you think that the king will just let some parasites question his rule? I still can't get it why you choose the options with blood spilled. E, just because I am forced to in the contemporary circumstances? Whatever. E, don't you just try copying me? You need more practice if you want to become a suitable duchess. While this conversation was all about my nonsense, I still remembered why this nonsense works so well. I was already done with showing off and it was a good time to go back home and offer my prayers to the deities of luck that support me all the way. While my arrival was not exactly grand, I still had a good way to show off before the departure. A bribe here, a bribe there and also gathering a large crowd of nobles under the guise of making a speech. The speech itself was nothing remarkable. Elena, I expect you to do what I said. After saying that, I turned towards the harbour and walked to the edge of the pier, and then I jumped off right into the water. The medieval people should be really surprised by seeing someone walking on the water, and if that was not enough, the hired people would start talking about divine powers. Clearly, no human can walk on the water, so it would be about my humble self. I steamed at my maximum speed and as I was about to leave the harbour, I summoned the fox fires at their maximum strength and covered myself in blue flames. I used my momentum to keep myself moving when I dived under the water. For the people on the pier it must look like I just vanished in the fire and that should also help me strengthen their belief that I am beyond their capabilities. Back at the construction site I entered the tent where I made myself a little shrine. I decided to pray at the altar and ask for help with achieving my goals. While normally I just feel some warmth from praying, today something happened. I felt as if someone was actually talking to me. I couldn't understand what was said but I felt as if I know where I should go. I was trying to understand what has happened and after I looked at the altar I found a map lying on top, a navigation map with a course towards somewhere, somewhere a few thousand miles away from here. I spent hours studying the map, trying to figure out all the shallows I will encounter on the way, where are the possible locations of the storms and where I can resupply the carrier. I decided to prepare carefully because it will be my first time navigating in this world's seas. Master, are you sure it is a good idea? You just found a map somewhere in the tent, and you already consider it to be an actual route somewhere. 
and where we will be going is still unknown. Rin was trying to make me reconsider, and she was doing this as a new part of her everyday duties. I decided to ignore her and keep preparing for the travel. The basics of my plan were prepared first. The neighboring nobles agreed to supply my expedition with food. Alina and Albert were to be left here to settle all the issues the duchy will have after my leave, as well as to oversee the construction of my palace. I still don't understand what makes me so eager to travel into the unknown. I doubt it is just due to me relying on the luck, granted to me from the heavens, or just due to my stubborn desire to find out what I can find there. All that I know is that there is something out there, a land where something is destined to happen. I did not rush the preparations or the departure so I had a lot of time to make sure everything will go smoothly. By the time I was ready to raise the anchor and plot my course, I've participated in Alina's inheritance ceremony and swearing loyalty to the king, who kindly arrived to my humble abode one day before the departure. This day will be forever remembered for Alina's clinginess. I was actually carried around in her arms all day, and even at night, when I was continuing ordering around for preparations, I was also carried around. She spoon-fed me all the times when I ate, she suggested to bath me. I think she was even ready to do some night business with me. I never found the latter one out because Rin wanted to be sleep-hugging me even more than Alina. Surely not because Rin had three more people to help her. In the end, after ten minutes of puppy eyeing me, I allowed Alina to join using me as a hugging pillow. I don't know if I will miss Alina after I sail into the unknown. V1 rewrite CH59 Final countdown after we have convinced Kasumi to join us. It was the time to go back home and continue messing around with the king and the country. For me and my maids it was a pleasure to finally go back, for Kasumi it was much harder. I lived here ever since I was born. After the others died or were killed, I was alone. W will you take care of me, Kaka? I did not dig into her past too much to avoid unnecessary emotions. I'd rather make her go away as fast as possible than to let her wander around absent-mindedly. She will overcome any nostalgia but first I should drag her out of here. Kasumi, stop walking around, will you? First, instead of packing her belongings, she was wandering around aimlessly and watching the cherry trees. While the maids were already done with packing whatever we had and were ready to go back to the ship, and ready to help the klutz Maiko with her own things. That is if the Maiko in question even tried to be of help. The more she continued wandering, the more I was thinking of her as a nuisance. But then I wished she was just walking around. After some nagging from my side Kasumi did start gathering what she wanted to take. She tried dragging all of her furniture. She tried cutting down trees to take them with her. She tried taking the entire damned house with us. We were doing whatever we could to prevent her from doing the crazy things. The fight went on and on, and I felt like it was the time to face the consequences of the prolonged neutrality of mine. I have to convince her to let this place be, otherwise I'll have to tie her and drag with us like a carpet, perhaps even in a carpet, while Kasumi was dragging a large chest. I patted her shoulder. It was enough to temporarily make her stop packing the mica trinkets. Kaka, W what can I do for you? She bowed and was already starting to return to the grabbing the entire house, like a crow. Kasumi, can you please bestow some of your attention to me? I said that with deliberate sarcasm. F forgive me, Kaka. Kasumi prostrated herself and now was ready to listen. We have no time to gather all of your things. We already postponed our return for two days, just for your sake. I am very disappointed in you. Take what is necessary and let us finally get going. That might be harsh, but considering how lenient I was, I need all of these. I require them for our rituals. She was too reluctant to let her past go and that was the last attempt I would make to stop her peacefully. The next would be to burn it all down and knock the Maiko unconscious. I understand, your past is more important than me. The bait was thrown. 
right in front of the fish. I hope she's a fish, not a swine. I don't want my bait being turned into pearls, Kaka, please. K, choose. I am tired of you making me wait. Either just stop pestering me with your gather, or finally move out of this place. W-Y. I'll love you firm youth. Why do you do this to me? She started crying and hugged me. She was hurt by my words but I should continue the scum line I've already chosen. There was no place for mercy. No matter how bad I feel for making a girl weep. The consequences of letting her be would be much worse. Moreover, either I continue pushing her and drag her away, or I will have to carry the damned house. Meanwhile, I had my first spectators. Master, I understand that you like to tease people. Grace looked at me with condemn. I even do share the sentiment. But, Grace, would you like to stay here for another week? She pretended she never saw anything, after I made the girl cry. Our preparations went so much faster. The next morning we finally left the temple. The mica was dragged by two specifically designated for it Grace and Bennett. The rest of us had to carry our luggage. On our way back to the ship we were going to pass by a forest. When we were close, my gut told me that something is just bound to happen. After all, my sixth sense was already trained to feel the incoming adventures. Soon something came out of the depths of the forest. A huge body slowly dragged itself to the clearing. It was long, almost a snake-like body with four long limbs. The creature's neck was decorated with golden ornaments and its mane had a long purple hair, tied into many braids. A dragon, a huge oriental dragon with glimmering white scales was looking at us, but for now it didn't attack. The maids hid behind me, while Kasumi stood by my side. Is it sapient? I whispered to her. What? She whispered back. Can it understand our speech? Yes. It is wise and strong. I am ready to follow your lead, Kaka. She was speaking confidently, very unlike her normal speech. Is there a way to make it go away? Kasumi appeared to be in thought, albeit for a moment. The Maiko rushed towards Willow and pulled a bag off the maid's shoulder. Immediately, I saw a huge pile of Maika trinkets. Oh, great protector. We plead you. Bestow us your mercy. Kasumi started dancing and immediately attracted the dragon's attention. While the Bollywood scene continued, I was just enjoying the slim waist and petite figure of the dancer. The Maika was not only dancing, she was also singing chanting. Honestly, I had no idea what her chants were for, but the dragon was not looking like it was against it. It took almost ten minutes of Kasumi's dance to make the dragon turn away and disappear in the forest. Kasumi stopped dance only after it was out of our view. Now, what the hell was that? One of the rituals. Sometimes the Makos are required to pacify the great beasts. We bestow our gods blessings and divine power to make the great beasts leave the humans be. Kasumi croaked. The girl was much more tired than one would expect from a short dance. Well, she doesn't appear to have an idol's training. So it is to be expected. Out of pity I had to carry Kasumi on my shoulders all the way to the carrier and up to the deck. She might be light, but after that I did like a few dozens of shuttles to drag all our belongings. V1 rewrite. CH63. Facing the Medusa even though my grand return was not in the way I hoped it would be. I still made a nice comeback with more power than I had before. There was a petty thing I expected may happen, and whatever bad things can happen would do so. According to Murphy's Law, the King's Gamble was almost successful, but the history would remember only for its foolish failure, and the retaliation he would soon receive. However, the first thing before humiliating the king would be making sure my own home is not crumbling. The flyby I performed in the morning showed that the fortress construction was stopped after a few weeks since my departure. The harbor was not finished so I once again had to anchor in a distance. The fairies flew back themselves while I had to carry the Maiko on my back. The parade of the worst possible outcomes continued when I was met by Alina who became quite agitated after seeing my backpack. Fuji, now I understand what made you late. She smiled like a devil. 
I felt not only my back getting cold but also my backpack shaking. H how about we talk this through? I gave Alina my best time innocent smile, contrary to my hopes, and accordingly to my expectations, her murderous aura of jealousy became even larger. You know what I had to suffer, right? She was not going to calm down, so it was the time to throw a tactical tantrum. You are cruel. Alina no longer loves me. You 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 you. I started crying like a baby. Stop. Right. Now. E. Yes, mother. Meanwhile, Kasumi shielded me with her body and started talking. Please, don't be angry with Kaka. She was following the gods' will. Not that Alina understood anything. You have one chance to explain me everything. Otherwise. She showed me cutthroat gesture. She was beyond the boiling point. W well, I was following the map. I was caught in the fog and arrived to a land far away. There I met Kasumi, the priest of a local temple where I also met the god who summoned me. I was forced to do a lot of crazy things and had to spend a lot of time there, and according to the gods will I took Kasumi with me. Is she telling the truth? Alina turned towards the maids, who were petrified by her Medusa glare. The maids were about to tell her that this is not exactly true. Though my own glare corrected their misunderstanding of the situation and they started fervently nodding their heads. Fuji my sweet little fox come here Tilda. When Alina's voice reached my ears, my blood froze like water during Alaskan winter. I could only put up with the inevitable. You will never catch me. I jumped off the cliff, and hurried to the safe carrier. Don't worry, little fox. You will soon return, and there I will be waiting for you. Take your sweet time Tilda. Elena smiled at me. I already know that there will be no salvation for me. Mommy will catch me and then I will be punished. But I needed to at least attempt to avoid it. After the food ran out I returned. Alina patiently waited for me, and didn't cool down in a slightest. I was forced to sit and see Isa for twelve hours without sleep. The Satan of a woman wanted to punish me more. But Kasumi decided to follow my lead and sat in C. Isa. I have absolutely no idea how the little Maiko's silent protest helped, but it saved my foxy butt from the follow up spanking. Only when Alina was done with the punishment, she cooled down. It was finally time to talk. Fuji, is she your new lover? E. She fell in love with me, due to their help. I pointed at a certain group of servants who feigned having nothing to do with it. I am really angry, Fuji. So I suggest you don't be too lovey-dovey with her. Understood? She was saying this gently but I perfectly understand that this was not a request. Can I do it when you don't see? I was cuffed by her. The follow-up spanking was averted when someone entered my tent. And here I am. Have you missed me, Fuji? Albert showed up happy with himself, even though I completely forgot about his existence. Why did you hit me? I can share my love with both of you Tilda. I ignored Albert and returned to teasing Alina. Come here. She sighed and summoned me with her hand. Hey, hello, I'm here. A. Hey, when I approached her, I was lifted up and sat in her arms. I just wonder how can she carry me like that with her slender girl arms. You don't look bothered, does it mean you are fine with it? Suddenly she asked me if I'm fine with being carried around like that? Of course, the answer is no, I still have some masculine dignity left, but should I tell something like this, she will surely keep on doing it. Ah, right, she already decided she'd do it ever after, I am focused on the aircraft. Which means, don't worry about me being passive. Since I only could accept my situation, I distracted myself by preparing for an imminent revenge on the king's head. I equipped the bombers with the heaviest ordnance I have. They are going to fly directly to the capital and drop the bombs on the king's palace. The bomber armada was soon assembled and regrouped into a box formation. I sent all of my bombers with just a couple of fighters for escort. The rest of my fighters remained here for emergency CAS and interception. A few hours after the start of Operation Stone Age, 
the armada arrived to the capital. The king appeared to have made some preparations, and that is why the escorts engaged Wyvern knights that tried approaching my formation. It wasn't a problem in any way. The Wyverns couldn't even fight the biplanes properly, and the advanced monoplanes are absolutely invincible for them because the beasts can't reach their altitude, nor can they can catch up. The bombers continued their way while the fighters remained to shoot down the enemy interceptors and earn me some upgrade points. Soon the bombers approached close enough to let me see the capital. I ordered them to set on the attack course for the palace bombing. All flights repositioned for carpet bombing. The bombs were released a minute before they would fall on the palace, devastating the king's pride and joy, as well as hopefully crushing his self-esteem. I was about to enjoy the fireworks from a rear gunner's puff, when I noticed that the bombs exploded mid-air, far away from the palace. V1 rewrite CH-64, a self-proclaimed goddess after the failure of my first bombing attack I started probing the capital's defense shield. Through small raids I found that the shield protected from any outside attacks allowing no unsanctioned objects to get inside the shield without a special magic charm. The latter part was discovered through the noble connections. There are no loopholes I could exploit with this shield, and there are no ways of destroying it discovered as of yet. Right now I have no way to get past the shield. While the king's attack on my castle was not well planned, he still made some backup plans to avoid my wrath. This shield was in case I returned before they crush Alina. I decided to continue ground and aerial assault until the king's forces will be pushed inside his shield. Meanwhile, I will continue searching for a way to bypass the magic they used. For the ground campaign I levied even more infantry from the nearby nobles and villages, truly becoming a disgusting senseless noble lord, who exploits all of his resources for a total war. Of course, the amount of resources I could master after a lost war was not much and the ground warfare soon ended in a stalemate. We have no forces to spare for an offensive, the enemy has no way to openly move around or fight. I set up aerial recon and put some flights of bombers on standby. Should the recon discover a movement, the bombers blow up anything that dares moving in the open. Our current resources are expended. And that is why for now the only way to win is to get more allies. Of course, the fact that I have the right to call myself a goddess lets me use the religion as my support. I summoned some nobles from the nearby areas to declare my new status. The Continent's church also decided to attend. My old friend, the Count, let me use his palace for my needs. He is one of my greatest assets in the kingdom and so I will continue using him as much as I can. My announcement and the Count's help soon allowed me to hold a large meeting. The Count's throne room was filled with people. There were rich traders, local nobles, military officers, and clergy. Above all of them I was sitting on the throne, with my tails as a cushion, as the amount of people increased. The room started becoming noisy, so I decided to begin my speech. I raised my hand to attract everyone's attention. Unsurprisingly, I was ignored. While the correct way to resolve this would be just to shout at them, I decided to just close my eyes and ignore them because it is unworthy of a goddess to be babysitting the mortals. They are just so noisy. Shut up already. Suddenly. Everyone stopped talking. When I opened my eyes to check what is going on, I myself was astonished. The people were trying to talk but not a single word left their mouths, as if somebody turned the sound off. You may talk. Let's see if this works. W what was that? A noble shouted and I decided to keep testing. Neil. He fell to the floor, right on his knees. I somewhat understood what happened. The goddess let me use some of her powers to prove my divinity. What is one's terrifying power is the other one's opportunity. With this it will be easy for me to make them recognize me as a goddess. I see that you are ready to listen. I decided to keep cosplaying the goddess. Listen, mortals. I am Fuji, the goddess from the east. I came here from the land where the cherry blooms and the gods walk among the mortals. I am here to represent the will of the celestial realm. 
Those who are willing to worship me, you are free to do so. Those who are going to worship their gods, never will I forbid that. Those who are here to oppose me, be wary of my wrath. I told them the guidelines of my policy. After that I held a banquet for all of the guests. There were people who approached me to ask for boons. There were people who asked me about what I will do afterwards. And most importantly, there were people who started discussing business. So you are the self-proclaimed goddess. I'm the high priest of the Church of Light. As long as you don't interfere we will have no need to be enemies. One of such people was a member of the continent's dominant religions. I am not self-proclaimed. Yet I do not feel the divine power emanating from yourself. He parried my words immediately. I am a vicar of the true goddess. If you think that makes me lower, you might as well try telling it to her directly. This is not a secret that I am a deputy goddess. As we were told, I shall say it up front. We have no desire to fight you, though we shall never acknowledge you. We oppose war. The phenomenon which follows you like your own tale. You are the very incarnation of war and death. A demon. I only want to hope that you are not the same as your kin. The priest was looking at me with an obvious dislike but he was not acting rash or trying to scare me away. You came here not to just tell me that. Go on. As I said, the church stands for peace. We are ready to acknowledge you, albeit we will stay uncommitted. Acknowledgement from our side has a lot of gravitas, and our request is minor. Why don't you show some of your goodwill and sign the armistice with the king? He also showed desire to stop this madness called war. He suggested something that can be useful for my endeavors. The break for me to gather the resources and prepare for the coming storm. You may all come to my land to discuss it. I hereby declare that none of the delegates will be hurt as long as they don't try harming me or my people. Then we have no other options but to put our trust in your words. Farewell, Vicar of a God. The priest walked away. I continued with searching for allies and establishing connections. V1 rewrite. CH65. Peace negotiations. Day 1 When I first thought about the possibility of an armistice with the king I was not delusioned. Ever since he decided to attack, I was no longer bound. I am already a criminal for many, and I never was considered a citizen of the kingdom, so currently I am a ruler of an entity that both is part of the kingdom and is not. The Pandora's box is opened. Though it was doubtful there will be any results from the talks, I had to accept this, just for the sake of having a justification to start an all-out assault due to me being the victim of the king's greed. In a week the delegations really did gather, and really did arrive to my future palace. Aside from the expected me and the king, the church joined too, as a mediator between the king and me. Mostly because I couldn't refuse it, since they are the second most powerful authority, right after the sovereigns themselves. Initially I expected the king to not have the guts to show up, but he did. Greetings, Fuji. K. To think your cowardness would show up? Funny, I thought that the risk of being turned into dust would bash some sense in you. Our delegations were somewhat small, and this allowed the two of us to meet often enough to make me sick. The king's delegation was led by the king himself. Also he had a few dukes and his prime minister. My delegation was of me and Alina. The church sent a few priests to assist our negotiation but there were no major powers backing them. We were sitting on the opposite sides of the table. The clergy was sat away from us and had no way to immediately interfere in case we begin beating each other to death. How about we stop this unnecessary war and return to our peaceful lives? The king began the talk and tried taking the initiative. How hypocrite of you, your majesty. You started this madness to just make us succumb to your rule. You killed your own countrymen just for the sake of self-satisfaction. Why should we even listen to you? Why shouldn't I ask her, Fuji, to kill you right here, right now? Elena started calmly but soon started shouting. Shut up, please. I want this to end soon. Stop with adding unnecessary s. I decided to shut her up before this turns into a very bloody mess. Did it not all start with you, 
Duchess, were you not the one who openly disregarded the royal decree and refused paying the taxes? Do you remember you are still our servant and hold the title of our kingdom? I sent numerous requests to comply with the royal laws. I sent envoys with offers, and yet you chose to disobey your liege. The king started counterattack, and why would you think she stopped obeying you? She was not your vassal in the first place. It was my time to try smoothing Alina's fail. I suggested her to swear her loyalty. She refused and said that she listens only to you. The land belonged to my kingdom in the first place, and I only agreed that it will be managed by you. Then your proxy disregarded everything, and dealing with it was impossible with you missing. I did what I could from my side, until we had no choice but to go to the war. And it all started with one foxkin disappearing, so how should we solve the mess you created? K. Dear delegates, please, why don't we spend some time to pray for the peace and take our time to cool our heads and clear our minds? The priests started their mediation. We both glared at them and thus reminded them not to interfere with the big guy's quarrel. Did you think that I, the master of this land, would just disappear and never return? Why did you start the war a week after my disappearance? So you do not deny that she disobeyed her rightful liege? K. Why would a king matter to her more than her goddess, me? I am a god, and a god is above the kings. I already can feel my assured victory. You are not a goddess. The clergy started shouting and showing their disapproval of my claims. That is the first time I hear about it. But then, it does not change the fact that I too am crowned by the god of light. He ignored them so did I. Do you think that the priests are loyal to you? They also don't care about you. I arguing will go on and on so I decided to try cornering him as much as I can. She holds the land that is part of my country, even if she is a priest to your esteemed person. She governs the lands that are within my realm. If you are a goddess now, that doesn't mean that you were one before, prior to this self-proclaimed god business of yours. I let her choose if she wants to let go of the land but keep her loyalty to you only, or acknowledge me as sovereign of the duchy she holds, while also keeping her loyalty to you, did I make a mistake here? The king continued his offensive and now he might even corner me, you might have waited for my return yet you called me dead, you might have tried talking this through and negotiating yet you started a war. You might have accepted your mistake and begged me for forgiveness yet you chose to do that only after I blazed my guns. You might have stopped the war after you made the Elena's forces withdraw to the fortress which is my land. You were the one who attacked me and now you tell me that you are not the bad guy here? I made the comeback. The argument continued, but today's talks ended with no result. V1 rewrite CH73 Meeting the royal guests when I exited the town hall I saw three people, all of which were my old acquaintances. Why are you here? Lacking money, your highnesses? When I remembered that king, I felt a subtle desire to shoot them at sight. When I first heard about someone who stopped a dragon with an unknown magic, I was sure it will be you. Long time no see, Fuji. Drake ignored my toxic speech and smiled at me. I understand why you're not happy to see us but give us a chance. We really need to talk. It is about the reason the damned monsters showed up everywhere. Marin, the archer, was a bit hurt by my reaction. Miss Fuji, even if you're angry, we are still happy to see you. Lily waved at me and tried approaching me. Wah. I was not angry. See can you please douse this fire? I am definitely not angry. Come on, Lily. Can't you just douse a fire? Drake tried encouraging her. I can't. The princess chanted a magic formation, but the fire did not go away. Seeing that those dumber s can't deal with anything, I doused the fox fire. You have ten words to tell me everything. Before even trying to talk with them, I needed to know what the hell they want from me. The demon started their attack. They want to kill humans. Drake managed to keep up with my demand. I already saw many demons. Why do you think that something has changed? I wondered what they actually want from me. 
because I killed many packs of monsters here, and some of them had demon hounds and other weird creatures, not to mention that the demon hounds always wanted to kill the people around. I was just wondering why they were coordinated. Wait a second, does this mean that there are more intelligent demons who are trying to attack the humanity? Like in those novels, there should be a demon king, a bunch of demon generals, and a great army of evil. My eyes must have shinned when I thought that all the hero novel cliches were fulfilled, and about me being the hero. Fuji, I think you're weird. Why do you act like this after hearing that there are demons around here? Marin made a few steps back. I might be happy with it. I am a demon after all. I showed my tails and teased them. First I thought you are a super warrior. Then you were told to be a goddess. Now you are a demon. That's quite a rapid change of profession. Drake was starting to become nervous. I am a goddess, though does it make me less demonic? I mischievously smiled and turned around a couple of times. Can you, as the goddess, help us? We need your help in this war. L, why should I? Your daddy did many bad things. Also, why do you think I can make a difference? I might be a charlatan. I don't know what you are in the reality but I know what you are for us, for all the humanity. You might be our only salvation, if we will have a goddess, or whoever you are. At our side then we will win. Lily was trembling and after her words she fell on her knees. Sister, what are you doing? D, you can hate us. You can despise us, all of the humans. I am not asking to help our kingdom. May I tea burn in ashes if you want. I beg you to save the humanity. Please, if you are truly as merciful as you appear to be, help us. She was in the middle of hysteric. While Drake and Marin were trying to stop her I was looking at it. Without a hint of emotion. I didn't feel like caring, which was as terrifying for them as it was disgustant for me. I want to know what happened and then I might make a choice. Follow me. I turned round and walked back to the town hall. The Blackstone had no way but to follow. I sat at a conference table. Drake. Lily and Marin also sat at the table. What happened? Who fights against whom? I know they may be biased, but at least I needed a starting point to understand what they are talking about. The demons started an attack against all human nations which bordered their lands. There are many casualties and this region was so lucky to survive because you are here. I heard that an ancient dragon attacked your location. In other places there were armies attacking. Only thus we were able to evacuate people. D. There was some kind of a demon nation? Why would you settle close enough to let them sneak so close? Who leads them? Where they come from? Yes. There is a demon kingdom. They are isolationist to my nature. Previously the demon kings were peaceful enough and rarely attacked. Some kingdoms even traded with them. Their current demon king was not showing any signs of aggression. But recently there were many times when an unknown force attacked the villages and towns near the border. On our way here we saw a town, completely devastated. It is somewhat close to this one. After Drake's explanation I started getting the idea about what happened. Border skirmishes against wild demons and beasts are no rarity. But then they rushed in like a tide. The other lands were attacked by demon armies which mercilessly slaughtered everyone. Will you help us? Will you? Please. Lily was not done with her hysteric behavior. While I was thinking about what to respond I heard someone rushing to the room. Again. Kaka. There was a messenger with a letter. Deja vu. I took the letter and started reading it. I did not forget to pat the Maiko who was running too much today. V1 rewrite. CH75. Meeting another ruler I began wandering around the camp and searched for the emperor's tent. The search was going somewhat successfully, since I saw the increase in the amount of people with the same markings as the rude guards had. I was approaching the possible place and after I walked past several more tents, I found a large ornamented pavilion. Stop, who are you? And what business do you have for his majesty? The entrance was guarded by two knights. Unlike their fellow men they were keeping some distance and were not acting arrogantly. I am Fuji. If you heard about me, then step aside. 
Wait here, I will report. One of the knights entered the pavilion, he returned in less than a minute, you can enter. The knight returned to his post and held the curtain while I was passing. The insides of the emperor's abode were furnished like a small office. There was a sturdy wooden desk where sat a middle-aged man in fine clothes. By the desk was a made bed on one side, and on the other side a small table with stacks of paper. After I entered, the man waved his hand without looking at me and continued writing something on a sheet. I found a couple of pillows near the entrance and sat on them to cosplay a certain lily. The man filled a few more papers and finally looked at me. For a moment I saw his surprise but he suppressed his emotions. This is our first meeting but I heard about you. Allow me to introduce myself, great goddess, I am Emperor Franz Linden von Gru. Can I ask, what is the reason for you to bless me with your presence? He was accurate with his words and avoided anything that can anger me. Should I introduce myself? I grinned. Just for the protocol, I guess? He followed my lead and grinned. I am Fuji, the goddess of this land. I came here after some of your servants insulted me. I hinted how I feel about the situation. This is a shameful display from my men. I will make sure they will not go unpunished. The Emperor's eyes slightly twitched. Your goodwill is commendable. I am pleased to hear about it and hope that our cooperation will be continued. I stood up and walked out of the pavilion because I had no more reasons to talk with him. Seeing that the overall amount of topics was expended, the Emperor silently returned to his paperwork. When I walked outside I bumped into a person. I raised my head and said, Hello, Lucy the King. How are you doing? My shiny mood was not so shiny. After I saw my old pain in the back, I never thought you will arrive. Your divinity decided to visit this beautiful place? He was happy to see me as well. Get out of my way, pretty please? You can step aside and I will pass. Hurry, please. K, fall on your damned knees, you rgh. The king fell, like a puppet with cut strings. Do not test my patience. I said that and stepped on his head. You. He could only yell at me. The guarding knights were shocked by our actions, but did not dare to do anything. Why are you standing there? Get her away from me. K. Whatever, I will be going. I stepped over him and walked away. You will pay for that. K. We will see. Oh, right. He can stop kneeling, while I wondered how to spend my free time. I walked through the camp and saw a few soldiers sparring. Some of them were swinging their swords and some were boxing. I stood close to the spectating crowd and spent ten minutes looking at the fighters. Unlike myself, they were actually relying on their skills, and not on the armor and brute force. If only they were training with Najnatas, I could have used some insights. I continued wandering around when I finally decided to see what is going on around the camp. I walked in a straight line until I reached the edge of the camp and continued walking into a forest. As soon as I was somewhat far from the camp I prepared to conduct some routine carrier ops. My poor scouts had to keep flying all this time and by the time I let them land they were almost flying on the last fumes of gasoline. But right after they were refueled they had to return to the sky. No matter how one would feel sorry for AI dummies, I have to rely on Air Recon all the time. I might have sent another flight, but, but I am just a lazy bum, who doesn't want to spend time equipping a new flight. I was breathing fresh air and walking in the forest. Occasionally I shot some daring monsters but they were rare and many fled before I even considered them a threat. When I walked into a pond I saw a figure in a white robe. The figure saw me immediately so I approached it. Greeting, young one. A male looked at me and waved his hand. Where am I? I might be lost. I was not too interested in talking so I skipped the introduction. The first thing I tried was acting all pitiful. You are not lost, young one. You are only wandering around to waste some time. The male's words made me shiver. What are you? Just guessing that a young kid soon would wander around aimlessly is one thing, 
but guessing that with no clues, while being a stranger in the middle of nowhere is the other. I prepared for the worst. Don't be nervous. I am not here to fight you. I am here to talk, and to introduce another being to you. The male stretched out his hand, pointing at me. Am I late? A female figure with a black robe showed up from behind me. Will you answer, who the hell are you? We? We are the gods of this world. I am the god of light, Arden. The male answered. I am the goddess of darkness, Shrey. The female introduced herself. I am Fuji, vicar of Akagi. We know, she already warned us not to interfere with her crazy schemes. You, unlike us, is interfering with the mortals' affairs so we are here to ask, what are you planning to do? The male said that with a bit of irritation. I started thinking about what they said. V1 rewrite. CH76. No offers required when the gods looked at me. Expecting an answer. I tried to hard to understand what exactly they want from me. What do you want to hear? I decided to probe what the gods think. We have no idea what Akagi wants. So we ask you, to know what we should expect. Unlike either of us, you are bound by nothing but her whims. But it does not mean we will be just standing on a side, spectating what havoc you two cause. We ask you not to interfere more than it is necessary. As well as not to abuse the powers given. A, sure thing. But I am not interfering, you know? Both gods suspiciously looked at me. Come on, I have no idea why this conflict even began. For now I can only be observing. Then allow us to ask something else. Fuji. Do you think the demons are guilty? Or that they are victims? Shri asked me a question about the demons. To me it was a question that barely made any sense. After all demons are the most common antagonist. Though it may be bad to answer her with this. I have no idea so I'll keep silence. Will you tell me something about it? No, we don't want to interfere. Eh, so, you are saying that you don't care if I will slaughter both sides? When I dropped the bomb, they both twitched and glared at me. I remembered the warning Akagi gave me. You are not going to interfere, so I am asking if you are not going to try siding me with someone. They calmed down after I corrected my words. As long as you don't exterminate our wards or forbid them from praying to us. We have no issues with whatever you choose. I wondered if they said it because they really don't care. Or because they are scared of the crazy goddess. I heard your terms, can I go? Yes, farewell. A, I hope we will continue our cooperation, Vicar. S, with this both of them disappeared. I washed my face in the pond and headed back to the camp. It was the time to start rallying support for my own agenda. While I was walking I heard something approaching. Soon, Three figures appeared in front of me. Two of them were red-skinned with short horns on their heads, and their leader was grey-skinned with long and polished horns. Even if I never saw this world's demons, I could guess who they are. You guys are here to fight or talk? I tilted my head to wait for their response. We, talk, divine. The red demons responded and stepped back. Who are you? Don't waste my time for any nonsense. I asked the grey demon and pretended to be uninterested. I am general of the demon king's army. My name should not concern you. Divine. I am here to deliver my master's offer. Gee, the demon king wants to offer me an alliance. How interesting. I was a bit sarcastic, since I felt like today I am being swayed into joining the antagonist's camp, and that it happened more than once. You are not exactly right. The king offers you to keep neutrality in exchange for the human slaves. Gee, ha ha ha, nice joke. Why should I be concerned with slaves? This was both amusing and unexpected. Would you not need any servants? The general was surprised by my response. This is obvious that I have no desire for them. What else can you offer? The king will be glad to discuss what we can offer to you. Can you tell me? What is your response about our offer? Did it interest you? Gee, why should I be interested? Why should I even be concerned to respond? Why not just do whatever I want? I have no need to concern myself with the demon's issues when I can just fight you. 
the more I said the paler general was. But it will be to great benefit to you. Gee, aha, uh -huh, right now I hear blabbering of a bad guy, trying to convince me to become a villain myself. We are not the guilty ones. The humans conquered our lands. We want to save our own kind. Moreover, we beg you to be neutral, not to help us. If you can, please, let us sort it out between both of our races. Gee, and what will you do after you win? We will. Uh. We will exile the humans from our lands. The general hesitated for a moment, further making me wonder if I should keep on listening. At this point it was barely of no matter to me, since the actually important matters were in the camp. I can only promise that I will think about it, no need to search for me. I walked away and left the demons to their own thoughts. By the time I returned to the conference the sun already set. The soldiers from all the armies gathered here were eating, resting or doing whatever else they did after the service. I even wondered if I look around I would find a brothel. Not necessary for me but it would still be interesting to know. When I was approaching the location of my camp, I was suddenly grabbed and dragged to the side. I looked at the one who did it and recognized that it was Lily. What do you need? The unexpected application of force to my fluffy self was the last drop into the cup of my patience, so I barked at her. Miss Fuji, can we talk somewhere, without any ears? L, sorry. I can't cut off mine. You have to work with only yours cut. I mean without anyone to eavesdrop. It is important. L, whatever you say is important so important that I even have to listen to it without going away. Why should I care about what is important for you? I can offer you something that can tip the balance to any side you want. Should I continue? While well, her words were somewhat interesting, I still was not convinced she is not just BSing me. Visit my tent in the midnight. No second chances. I decided to let her try convincing me but held no expectations for anything but the already heard begging for help. V1 rewrite CH86 Sibling rivalry It did not take much of my time to reach the prince's supposed route. However, before it happened I had to adjust the army's route more than once. It was all due to an issue I encountered. I found that the lag between my scouting planes finding the prince's group and me arriving there is too large. No matter how much a plane's speed is, it can't just teleport between destinations, creating a delay between the detection and the arrival. The last opportunity to intercept the prince's army was slipping away rapidly and to increase the odds I used my secret weapon. I decided to perform a rapid aerial attack to immobilize the group and while they can't run away the main force will rapidly attack. While the main group of dive bombers was dragging behind, I let Willow be the scout. My choice of using jet plane was caused by the Fury's faster speed which should also decrease the lag between my attack and the enemy's movement. What should I do, master? I was instructing my own tales, because Willow digs in the moment I stop walking. Your task is to discover the location of the enemy. You should avoid detection, so be careful. When you find them, just return before you are spotted. Yes, I understand. Tell me when I should go. She responded and returned to her playing. Does she bother you? Grace was both jealous and concerned. By concerned I mean that she is concerned whether Willow is going to forget the task. No. You can join her, I will just make the parody of a princess work in your stead. I invited my second maid to have some fun. Knowing how my maids love to cuddle instead of working, there should be no consequences. I shouldn't, master. If I won't be able to fulfill my duties then why am I even here? Gee. The army marched for one hour until I decided to find the location of the prince's group. Following my plan, I launched the jet fighter. When the enemy force was discovered I estimated the distance between them and me to be 10 kilometers at most. The enemy had a few hundred soldiers and a lot of carriages. My army will catch up in one or two hours. But first I needed to slow the enemy down. I prepared the brave New World Air Strike materializing above me four flights of kicker jets with 500 kilograms bombs. 
they dived at the enemy column and hit almost all of the carriages, which stopped the enemy from moving forward. The prince's forces had to regroup into combat formations and prepare to meet me. During the time my own force was approaching, the enemy set up some basic positions which meant that they will fight. Both armies were mostly standing behind their vanguards because there is not too much space for large forces. The difference was that my army has my own power which can be considered supreme in this world. I stepped forward with Lily and summoned the gear. I fired ranging shots but did not continue. I waited if Drake will come to me by himself. A minute later he indeed showed up, with a sword and armor. He was not coming here to talk but to fight. Can you make him surrender? Maybe. He is not completely unreasonable. Lily stepped forth, armed to the teeth as well. The siblings stared at each other for some time before they started talking. Brother, you should surrender. If you want to save our father's country then you should just step aside. L, sister, you perfectly know that what you are proposing is just selling our father's country to this fox. While I hoped she will be a friend, now I know that it is too late to talk. D, you are going to sink the land in blood. This can be avoided so why are you so stubborn? She did not order you to fight but to let her be the leader for the humanity. L, and you are sure she will just stop there? Power corrupts, and by the looks of things Fuji is completely lost. D. Their debate was making my head hurt. I did not interfere in their own relations so they kept on arguing. Until they reached the boiling point. I will not let you sell our lands. D. I will not let you kill our people. L, with this they ran at each other and started fighting. With swords, generally, a mage is not as good as a melee warrior, so Lily was on the losing side. However, she was smart enough to break the distance, and because she was much lighter, she outran her brother. When she was far enough, the running in circles was over and the mental princess fired some magic. Her magic missed a lot but she kept on shooting magic projectiles. Few of them hit but even that much was enough to hurt Drake. He was receiving scratches all the time, until his fatigue and pain made him stop. The prince dropped the sword and raised his hands, surrendering to the inevitable. The same evening Lily entered the capital and a few days later she was crowned as the new queen. Drake was sentenced to be put under house arrest until I decide what to do with him. Soon I returned to my palace and from there I started making war plans for destruction of both the demons and the coalition of human nations. V1 rewrite, CH93. Let's end this war by Christmas military campaign was going smoothly ever since I defeated the demon army. After I cleaned up the treacherous elements in my own camp, the human coalition faced a constant offensive from my side because there was no need to keep regiments in the rear. I was considering both an offensive to conquer the demons once and for all and sending the forces to subjugate the remnants of the coalition before sending everything against the demons. To make the final decision I summoned a military council of Lily and Elena to help me decide what I will do. Well, at least I let them try to. The war already drained the majority of human recruiting capabilities. If you want to attack the demons then we will only stretch our resources and compromise the front line against the rebelling rulers. Lily was trying to convince me to postpone finishing the demon war. Yes, right. Your Majesty, do you really think that if we let the demons regroup and attack again then everything will be going smoothly? While they are kicked in the bee we should send an army to end them on their own soil. Elena had a point as well and thus I was the one whose voice will make them both shut up and obey. I love my position so much. We have no forces. Even if Lady Fuji joins an army, there is no way we can win the war there. We must not risk her health. L, you know her for a couple of months. I know her so much better and I am sure she will win. Not to mention that she already has a plan to go beat the demons. E, I wonder where from she knows about that. I thought that Grace will not tell anyone about my plans, at least I have an experience as the kingdom's princess. I was taught the military tactics and stewardship. Can you say the same, my dear Duchess?
At some point their argument turned childish. It is time to stop them. You became queen because Fuji made you one. E. Bang. They both were startled when I hit the table with my little fist. Girls, stop arguing about petty things. Lily Chan, go stand in that corner. Elena Chan, you stand in the other corner. I took over mother's role from Alina. If I didn't, the problem would have turned into a fist fight. Fuji, do you think it is fine to just... E. You want to tell me something? I looked at her with frightening look. That was enough to prevent any objections. I do love my position. After I realized that the children will not help me in any way I just decided to follow my original plan and sent an army towards the demon territory. The plan is to walk the army into the demon capital, punch the demon king in his face, and victoriously return home. The campaign will be over by Christmas. The execution was started soon. My army was sent towards the demons, while a series of airstrikes was sent at the human coalition to make them entrench for a while. Overall morale was high, and everyone was assured of the quick and decisive victory. Me being in the vanguard of the offensive helped that too. I was leading the army on the shoulders of my faithful steed. Will we be fighting too? She asked me out of blue. I doubt that we too will be on the front lines. Even if we encounter some resistance, I will just send my planes. Meanwhile, you can be fluffing my tails. You are becoming lazier with each passing day. E. Of course I am. I fought in melee an entire week ago. I might be riding her shoulders but damn it, I am this army's main fighting force. It is only natural to have me stay fresh and happy. Not to mention that I like being carried around. If only you were half as diligent as you are lazy. Mommy was weirdly patient today. Not that I am against that. I can be diligent when the time comes. But right now I must be resting to perform perfectly. If you say so, little fox. E. Our chit chat was interrupted by a sudden call from a soldier from the front line. Urgent news for the commander. Your divinity. There is a disturbing discovery up ahead. After the soldier reported I patted Alina's shoulder to put me down. I walked to the head of the column and saw what the soldiers discovered. There were two bodies, of a man and a woman. Both bodies were flayed and dismembered. Their limbs were placed above the torsos like a wood pile. The bodies were lying here for a while. In the flesh I could even see maggots. After I was done examining the bodies and the surroundings I hurried away from the disgusting sight. But even though I was disgusted, not doing anything would hurt the morale, so I ordered the soldiers to dig a pit where I'll burn the remnants. The dead cannot be resurrected, but at least I can let the two of them rest in peace. V1 rewrite CH95 Searching for the light Even since my army entered the demon territory I was sure that I will not face a lot of resistance. Of course it was only because I already crushed the main force of the enemy. While there were skirmishes here and there, mostly the army was dealing only with the dangerous wildlife. The pace of our advance was not affected, because I set up air patrols to search for any possible threats. Whatever was not bombed into oblivion would be weak enough to be dealt with by the vanguard of the army. However, the amount of activities required was also taking a toll on me. Fuji, should we have some rest? Ever since you decreased the amount of stops we all have fewer opportunities for rest. T. If you don't want to rest yourself? Then think of the army that is getting tired of walking. Elena stopped me when I was done sending a new patrol. It is in our best interests to hurry and end this war. And it is in our best interests to have your army ready to fight. I'd be surprised if there are any adventurers amongst the soldiers. Unlike us, mad lads who travel the continent far and wide, the majority of those people are not used to that much walking. I swear I heard some of them silently praying to gods that you will just stop to launch some planes. E. I turned towards the soldiers and, well, they could use some time resting. Sorry, guys. I did not pay attention to my surroundings. I apologized to the soldiers while keeping my best embarrassed face. 
I was not actually feeling bad about them. The army may be consisting of drafted peasants, but it was still an army with me commanding it. The soldiers were somewhat reverent of me, especially because I was doing most of the work, and now that I am showing how kind I am, the amount of prayers to myself would also increase, but aside from my selfish interests, I also had to actually consider our state. The tired army was an obstacle in itself, so I followed Alima's suggestion. After I declared a short rest everyone just sat all eyed on the ground, including Alina and Kasumi. The maids were also lying, but they lied down on me. What a bliss. The tired Maiko was playing with beads, while watching Little Plane's taxi on my flight deck. Who could have thought you will be this tired? Throughout our march Kasumi never did any kind of a hard work. At most she was jumping around in the so-called dances, relieving the soldiers' fatigue, not through her priest powers, but through the occasionally showing silky skin. Surprisingly, the one who was actually working all the time, Alina, was mostly fine. Only her slightly reddened cheeks and unsteady breathing were giving out her fatigue. Mommy, feed me. I waved to Alina, and before she could show me her fist, a baby bottle appeared in front of my face. Thanks. I took the bottle from Grace, and put it away asap. When my eyes returned to Alina, I saw how she sneered at me. Not funny. You sure? Could it be that my little fox bastard wants to be fed by me Tilda? Despite my pouting of disapproval, Alina continued sneering. You know what? Go ahead. I sat in see Isa, and prepared to be fed. I was expecting Alina to at least try boiling over it, but just as many times before it, soon I noticed her approaching with the baby bottle. Before I could run away, Grace and Willow grabbed my hands and pinned me down, while gloating Mommy Alina was exaggeratedly slowly bringing the bottle closer to my face. Kakasumi, save me. May the gods take pity on your soul. She put her palms together, and innocently smiled at me. Amit Abba, my A. Where did your love and loyalty to me go? I was saved in the last moment, when we were called out by a soldier. The four disappointed girls sighed, and three of them glared at the messenger with murderous intent. My liege, there is a person in a weird outfit. The person looks like one of your servants. He pointed at my maids and that was enough for me to hurry there. I passed from the rear to the front of the army column. I was jumping over soldiers who lied on the ground. I was jumping through crowds of people and squeezing between those who were standing. When I finally reached the person in question, I was concerned with what happened and why she is alone. Greeting, Master. I beg your forgiveness for my cowardice. A blue-haired maid prostrated in front of me. I never thought I would see you again. I was close to forgiving her but my inner self was still disappointed. I am ready to accept any punishment. B. Why did you return? I thought you wanted to leave me with Rin. Speaking of whom, I am yet to find her. I had a lot of time to look at what is going on. After all this time I realized that Master was doing her best to end the war, not to fuel it. While I am happy to see her return, I am still feeling that something is off with her apologies. Why did you return? I continued probing her in hopes of finding the real cause. Master is too paranoid, that is understandable. After I saw the world from a bystander's perspective I was no longer misguided by my own perception. I saw that Master was gathering the humanity with greater good in mind, not to mention that you want to stop the vile demons from killing everyone. I am here to return to my duties and help you achieve your goals. She knelt and put her hand on her chest. I accepted her return and hugged her. She is weirdo but I at least wanted to believe that she is not lying. Not that any of my maids can be an actual threat to me. Do you know what happened to Rin? It was a good time to start searching for the Yandir maid. If Bennett decided to return, then perhaps Rin is also willing to do the same. I am sorry. I cannot be of help here. Right after we ejected we parted our ways. Something was not right but I let it slide for now. First I needed to make sure Bennett won't leave me for now, while I am searching for Rin. Looks like we will need to search further. Let's go back to the others. 
Our lines may have dwindled, but we still have work to do, especially the maid who was neglecting her duties for too long. When we returned to the rest of my companions Bennett was knocked down by two girl bodies. While the fairies were catching up, I made my way towards Kasumi with a specific request. Kasumi. My cute little beloved Kasumi. Do you remember how you did not help me Tilda? I give you a good chance to redeem yourself Tilda. Do your myco magic and search for any clues regarding Rin, the red-haired servant. I had a good reason to believe that Kasumi has some kind of prediction abilities, which is why I hoped she can at least find something about Rin's whereabouts. Why yes, I will ask the gods. K, for now I had to hurry and knock into the demon king's door. Punch him a couple of times because he is the reason I did not see my maids for so long, and get my ring back. V1 rewrite, CH96. Finding the last maid after I reacquired my fairy maid Bennett, we continued moving towards the Demon King's castle. The current stop was 50 kilometers away from it. Before pushing forth towards the target I needed a fob. A safe place to field my army, where the demon hands would not bite the patrolling soldiers' heels, and where I would not have to worry about yet another commotion happening somewhere in the front slash rear slash anywhere, choose either, of the column. I found a good spot at a relatively flat hill and made the army build a wooden fort. The fort will be used to station the troops, store the supplies and as a place where I will be able to launch aircraft from complete safety. The speed of building would be fast enough to complete the fort in two or three days, and without any interference the process was going smoothly. I was not worried about possible enemy attacks, because there are no enemy armies that can threaten the fort before it is finished. My air arm was not idling even during the nights. I was walking around the construction site and looking at the working soldiers. Most of them were busy clearing the trees around because I managed to pick a spot which was not large enough for the scale of the construction, and was surrounded by dense vegetation. However, it is the best observation spot I managed to find from above. Everything was so quiet that I grew bored in no time. After another patrol returned I decided to poke the demon castle and remind them of my existence. It was just a minor raid with small number of flights to test the defenses. I was prepared to send some cluster bombs in case the demon set up a shield. Not that it will help them after I worked out an efficient scheme of breaking their ancient super duper magic. The raid did not encounter any resistance all the way until the castle. Even when the dive bombers dropped on it, no magic missiles were shot, just as if there were no demons to counter me. Without failing to live up to my expectations, the dropped bombs exploded before they should have confirming that the irritating magical shield is there. I harassed the demons with a couple of strikes and returned to my other duties. One of them is of course interrogation of Bennett who is still trying to cover up the situation with Rin. Right after I finished my wandering, I walked towards the maids who were cheerfully discussing something. They were talking almost simultaneously which is why I could not differentiate what each of them said. They were so engrossed in their talking that they did not see me until I knocked Willow's back. Good to see that you're not wasting your time. I am sure I can be proud for having such diligent maids. Care to tell me why you did not see me? I asked the embarrassed trio. W.E. We have no excuse, Master. I want you, Willow and Grace, to hold Bennett. After they cut off her escape route I began the interrogation. So. Where is Rin? I told you that I parted ways with her from the very beginning. B. And I tell you that this is not going to convince me. I can clearly see that you are not telling me everything. As much as I want to believe you. This is not the thing I will be lenient on. F fine. With this she unbuttoned a part of her shirt and was trying to grab something there. In a short time she found what she was searching for and took out a ball of cloth. When she did it I clearly heard two shocked sighs and when I looked at the girls' faces I saw that they became pale and greenish. How? Is this? Possible? I'd never imagined that this can end up in such a way. 
We stood in a complete silence for a couple of minutes. The morning was over when Bennett began her confession. We did part our ways but prior to walking away she said that she will go and settle a score. I found her. You get the idea, when I was walking into the demon territory, there was a merchant caravan I walked into by accident. When I actually saw what they are carrying. B. Could it be that smuggling of exotic goods is prospering in times like these? It can. Yes, but I wonder why the exotic goods are smuggled towards the demons and how they avoided my own detection. Can she be saved? That was the only thing that mattered for me. I can always punish the perpetrators for I have a lot of time. If Ren can be saved then I should do whatever is possible. There is no hope. Bennett shook her head. Do you remember who I am? I pounded my chest and pridefully reminded them. Even the gods have no way to save the dead, we can only accept that. Bennett was saying everything confidently but even she was not untouched by this loss. I wonder if we just have no idea how to save Rin. I carefully took the cloth package and hid it inside my kimono. I will have to confront the Demon King a bit earlier than I anticipated. V1 Rewrite CH97 Subjugating the Demon King filled with the righteous fury. I decided to pay a not so friendly visit to the Demon King. Where the hell do you think you are going? As I was about to slip away unnoticed. I just had to be noticed by Alina. He he he. You see. I, I am going to see some flowers. I thought of every perverted thing I could to have my cheeks reddened as if I am embarrassed. Who do you think you're trying to fool, little fox? Since when does an anime fox go to a toilet? Alina seized me with her arm, and dragged back to the tent. Right where the other girls were. Guess what? This little fox bastard just tried to run away, leaving us alone. E. You're being overdramatic. I was just leaving for a moment. And you immediately, leaving? I don't remember you doing anything with your hands, so why would you go anywhere? E, don't tell me you think I'm lazy. Elena's expression can only be described as an utter doubt. Kaka, does she say you were trying to leave? Do you not love me anymore? Am I no longer needed? Please, please, don't throw me away. The next on the list of craziness was Kasumi. Why did you even think I'd leave you? Alina, did you really need to stir this up? Look, poor girl almost had a heart attack. S sorry. Still, do you think it's alright to just go out as you wish, without even warning us? E, this is my own problem, so, listen here, you little bastard. Since we embarked on this journey together, it is natural we are going to go through thick and thin together. Girls, am I right? Alina showed at the maids, who were fervently nodding, and at Kasumi, who was trying hard to understand what was said but still nodded along. I don't want to endanger you. Gotcha. Alina flicked her fingers, and glared at me. Now, tell us where the hell you were going to. Seeing flowers no longer works. She leaned closer to me, and glared right into my eyes. Demon King. Alone. E. Yep. You're crazy. E. Well. I glanced at the maids, and noticed how agitated they were. The three of them were burning me with their glares of disappointment. Master, did you decide to go without us? It concerns not only you, but us as well. W. Brilliant. Now it's four voices for going. Kasumi, you're in. E. The Mika was still confused, but bringing her up to speed was the worst idea. Kasumi, do you know what good wives do? The girl shook her head. Good wives wait for their husbands, and greet them when they return. So save your love, and pour it on me when I come back Tilda. I made a heart with my fingers, and smirked at Elena. While Kasumi was thinking through my words, I turned to Elena. So, four versus one, right? But then who will be looking after Kasumi? She doesn't look like she's going to come with me Tilda. I grinned. Ha, huh, you can go. But make sure not to get hurt. And remember, there are girls waiting for your return. Alina resigned herself, and walked out of the tent. When I was about to go and finally slaughter the demon king, my arms were grabbed by the maids. We are going. No objections. Bennett, Grace and Willow then turned into the lights, 
and stuck to my face, as I was not bound by human speed of walking. I packed the lights inside the kimono and used my plane taxi to get to the Demon King's castle. To show a somewhat friendly nature of this visit I ordered the comet to switch on its navigation lights and fly at a comfortable altitude of one kilometer where wyverns are barely able to fly. Soon we were intercepted by a couple of wyvern riders. They were not openly hostile which is why I let them catch up. But just in case. The comet has a machine gun named at them. Those little rifle rounds are one of the reasons there were no bomber losses from Wyvern attacks. When we arrived to the Demon Castle the plane descended and slowed down which was enough to safely jump off. While I was falling down I even sensed how the fairies trembled. As I made the landfall my vision was blocked by a cloud of dust. Right after the dust settled I found myself surrounded by all kinds of demons. Neither of them was approaching me, and even though they had their weapons at ready they were looking at me nervously, as if they were not terrifying beings called demons by my surrounding a fox. I stood up and straightened my back. What a warm greeting I've got out of my way. And they scattered around and hid as vermin are supposed to. Only trembling eyes could be seen around me. I released the fairies and proceeded to the demon king's front door. The fact that no one dared stopping me was a bit disappointing because I actually wanted to cause a scene. I left the girls outside just in case something happens to me. Instead of wandering around and examining every centimeter of the castle I headed straight towards the throne room, where I suspect it is. First I walked into a laundry room, then I found Trey. I mean a conveniently placed room with empty shelves and chests. Ding. Go away. I continued wandering around and walking into random rooms. I was about to start making doors myself when I finally found a door with a large sign above it. Just please, enter here. While I hoped that there will be some loot I only found an unopened loot container called Demon King. It was sitting on its throne in the so-called thinking pose. It did not raise its head and was just mumbling something. Because it did not pay any attention I started examining the room to search if there are any traps. For the darkness sake, you already stole half of my treasury. Can you stop loitering around every chest in this room? And here comes my scene. Impudence. Who let you talk back? Just a bit more and I can pretend I was not the one who started it. You and I are both busy so let us talk business already. DK, fine, let's make this quick. Is there any way to? I shrugged my shoulders and showed the cloth ball. There is not. If you think that I can resurrect the dead then try it yourself. Oh, right. Tilda he broadly smiled at me and judging by his tone he was mocking me, seeing such an impudence in front of my fluffiness. I prepared to abuse the godlike powers I was given. It is time to punish him. On your knees, nothing happened. I tried again and again but nothing happened to the demon king. What's up? Something went wrong? I tried to be a good host, I did not even do anything while you were causing troubles to my entire domain. I let you come. Even though you are my enemy, I closed my eyes at your rude behavior in my own home. I tried talking to you properly, without being rude. Yet, there is a limit to my tolerance. Right now you can do nothing to me, and I kindly suggest you withdraw with your tails between your legs, unless you want to be carried out in a coffin. DK, instead of answering I charged at him. I used both the Najin R2 and 127mm guns. I both pierced him with the blade and fired from point blank. Well, I gave you a chance. When I looked through the smoke I saw that he grabbed the blade with two fingers and was holding me in the air. The shells were also caught by him and were placed in his other hand. I nervously smiled because I knew. I'm screwed. Shriek I was launched into a wall. The demon king hit me with his sword, and it was just a blunt hit, but I feel like I lost half of my HP. What's up, goddess? Did your powers go away? Or you cannot deal with a mere demon king? He continued mocking me. Judging by your dumbfounded look you expected that everything will go your way, right? Let me tell you one little thing before I crush you like a bug. 
You were doomed the moment you opposed the gods. You are a mortal who dared opposing the immortals and now you are paying for your arrogance. He was so full of himself that I only wanted to punch him. The only problem is that he will really kill me the moment I approach. Looks like you are not going to move. He smirked. Then it is time to cut some of your tails. And appeared right in front of me. When I already closed my eyes and prepared to receive a lethal hit I heard something unexpected. A sound of flute. V1 rewrite. CH99. The final victory wait a moment. I knew she might do something like that but I never expected that she will outright say no without giving me any chances. Akagi-sama does whatever she wants, and now I don't want to help you resurrect this thing. She did not feel even a slight pity for the fairy. Will it hurt you to just save her? Is it so hard? Smack watch your tone. A, eh, I never begged you for anything. Why are you refusing? I prostrated. Let me think about how many times you already did. It's not like I asked for something important, is it such a huge problem? Are there any super spells involved? Are you required to spend a ton of divine power? I do not understand why she refuses. I already said why. I just love such answers. I know you love them. You constantly use them. She mocked me back. Please. Seeing how much she wants to help. I had all the reasons to be desperate, I can give you a book how to properly bury a fairy. Do you need? A, I tried puppy eyeing her, I tried acting seductive, I was ready to just let her do whatever she wants to me. I even remembered she wanted to do something. If you are done, I am returning. A, just one last request. The Lilai Kitsune finally pondered, no. With this she disappeared. I released the fairies and together we dug out a small grave. I was not crying, I was too angry for that. If you can't fight back the gods then hit whatever is within your reach. In my case it is the demon king, who may still be coerced by the gods. I took a quick taxi back but at the place of the demon king's palace I saw a crater. When I returned to the army fort I saw that all of the people there were in confusion and shock. Right after I landed Alina approached me and hit the top of my head. Was it actually necessary? She was beyond the boiling point. I did nothing. I wanted to just release some steam but accidentally shouted. What do you mean? I clearly saw something impossible happening and you are the one who keeps doing crazy stuff. She was confused. Can you tell what happened while we were gone? Judging by your reaction it really wasn't you. Strange. R. Yes. First there was a huge explosion in the direction you went. Second. There was a woman in black robe who delivered us a letter. I did not open the envelope. Third. What is the strange tune we heard? E. The first and the third are connected. Don't ask anything, please. The second one you can hand over. The contents of the letter are simple. The gods. Both of the locals, say that the war with the demons is over and that as long as I don't touch their land the demons will not attack humanity anymore. With this I finally diverted my war effort at the human coalition. I was not able to avenge Rin by killing the demon king but I might be able to find who was responsible for her death. Sooner or later, Rin will be avenged. Now that I was not bound by having to fight on many fronts I only needed to make the rest of the humankind accept me as their supreme ruler. I was slowly searching for the responsible for Rin's death but I also have to live on. The next months were rather peaceful for me. I had several voyages to the front lines but mostly I was ordering around like an armchair commander. The rulers who were more or less saved from the demon threat rightfully acknowledged my role in saving them and thus I quickly was expanding my influence all over the known world. After the coalition recognized the futility of its struggle the rulers accepted their loss and soon I became the ruler of the entire continent. I walked through the marble halls of my palace. Here and there were servants and guests who arrived to the capital of this world the celestial palace where I reside. Soon I entered the largest hall of the palace and approached my throne. By the luxurious seating of mine were standing two girls, both were not too pleased. Fuji, 
no matter how much you like to laze rest, at least pretend to be doing something. Elena was worn out and it circles around her eyes. Since I was not a bureaucrat, I left all the administrative work to her. Now, now, you can finally rest. I am done doing the most important thing I ever done. I hid my cute face behind a fan, and was ready to present her my masterpiece. Though the intrigue I was trying to build up was spoiled by Kasumi's peek behind the fan. Kaka, what are those? K, those, my baby girl, are the best things you've ever seen. I nodded in full satisfaction, but Elena just facepamed. First you lock yourself for an entire week, then you keep us waiting for no apparent reason. E, are right. Kaka. Why you can't treat us like we did don't exist? Kasumi pouted. But I only did it for your sake. I was still proud with myself, and just continued observing the girls slowly getting mad. Give me the fan. Alina stretched out her hand, but she only received an umbrella's handle. Thanks Tilda, it was getting hard to hold onto it Tilda. Before I received a righteous cheek pinching, I hid behind Kasumi. Cat. E. Kaya, before Elena could call out to Kasumi, I pinched the mica's bottom, making her completely irresponsive to anything but embarrassment. Come here, you little. Suddenly, Elena stopped her attempts at catching me. Whoosh before I could react. My fan was snatched from behind. Master, would you like some warm milk? Bennett put a glass in my hand. Ha, huh, here you go, mistress. While I was spacing out. Willow passed the fan to Elena. At the same moment mommy saw what was hidden behind the fan. Her face started reddening. Ara, Ara, look at these cheeky maids. What's up, Elena? Did they spoil your fun Tilda? Seeing that my handiwork was indeed a success, I returned to being proud like a peacock. The only person here who was still clueless with what was going on was the little Maiko. Kasumi was looking around, at my smug face at Elena's crimson cheeks, and at the maid's snickering. Can anybody at last tell me what is going on? K. Kasumi. This little fox bastard has finally found guts to make us her wives. Elena could only turn away, unable to look into my innocent A's. But, are we not Kaka's wives already? K. That's my girl Tilda. I patted the clueless Maiko. The moments of happiness didn't last long since Alina had to shoulder even more work now. V1 rewrite, CH100. One last thing despite my ultimate success at establishing myself as a cheat character whose will can make entire nations kneel, and despite having a small harem of loyal girls, I was still not satisfied. All because there was this one little fairy, who died way too young. It took me four months to find the clues about Rin's murderer. Without telling a word to my wives and maids, I slipped out of the palace, and traveled to faraway lands, a few hundred kilometers away. The last traces of the criminal scum were the remnants of a caravan camp on the way to the Gru Empire. This determined my following course of actions. I thought that because I have enough information to trace the murderer. I would also be having enough information to have the entire empire hunt down the troublemakers. Of course, only to the point where they would have nowhere to run to, giving me a good opportunity to act like a punisher. When I reached the group capital, every single one of its inhabitants knew that it was me coming. Just because I was stupid enough to accidentally reveal myself on the way. However, the ruckus I created also let me get the audience with the emperor. Within minutes after I stepped in his palace. I was immediately led to the Emperor's office and could immediately start talking about the goal of my arrival. Are you not too unexpected, Goddess? Why would you need to come here the same year we met the last time? The Emperor was writing something, but he was frequently raising his eyes off the papers. To be short, I think the ones who murdered my servant months ago are currently here, and I want your cooperation on finding and punishing them. Punishing? What a mundane goddess you are, to think you would care so much about us, mortals, that you are here to do law enforcement. Even though he was way more sarcastic than I would like him to, I pretended I didn't care. So, can I expect your help? 
But of course, my personal help, or you would be talking to my marshal about it. The emperor pulled a blank sheet, and started writing something. I was waiting for him to finish, but at some point he stopped, and glanced back at me. So? F. I think I would be satisfied with just the marshal. The emperor grinned at my words, and continued writing. Then he stamped the letter, and called for a servant to guide me to the military ministry. After stirring up the empire, I only needed to wait for the good news. My super accurate data was enough to start slowly narrowing down the search area, until one day a patrolling aircraft found a caravan highly resembling the one described in the clues I had. Even though the murderer knew I am searching for them, they did not even try to hide. Moving along deserted paths far away from the main roads does not count. When all was set for the trap, I initiated the execution of plan roasted bastards. I, the murderers, and a regiment of Guru Palace guards clashed together in an uneven battle with the numerical advantage of ten to one. Truly, seeing every criminal scum being kicked by a dozen guards was satisfying. After all of the participants had their share of fun or broken ribs, we gathered all of the criminals in the same spot and I proceeded with the interrogation. Which one of you has killed a fairy this year? Birds chirping, and crickets buzzing nobody? And nobody needs legs? Birds did chirp, but only until somebody's leg was cut off I went on with the execution, until the criminals started pointing out one of them. It's him. Yes, him. He was the one who caught a fairy. We have nothing to do with him. As a matter of fact, this merciful me delivered a swift and painless justice, in form of a short, and totally not redundant, test of how leather arm affairs against the Najnata, and because I am completely merciful, the rest of the poor accomplices were to be thrown into the deepest tube yet. When I was about to start wiping off the blood, the time stopped. I blinked and found myself in a white room. You look like you are enjoying yourself. I saw that god once again, and couldn't help wondering. Why did you summon me? Because, if you remember, I offered you a chance to try something else when you are satisfied. What do you think about trying something else? Something entirely new? Even though living here was nice and fun, I felt like I achieved all I could achieve. I felt bored of living a lavish royal life, I guess. Why not? After I finish one last thing. Of course. Whenever you are ready. I headed back home to bid farewell to my lovely mommy and wives. Announcement I will start posting the V4E the three days later. Or, if everything goes south, the next Thursday. End of block 2